Hello everyone, welcome to this channel. I am Lily. Today we are making a playthrough video to check how the patch knowledge has affected the game. Okay, let's start straight at it. We are going to play Mesolithic to Neolithic. We're going to start Autumn because I want to see if there are nuts. And I want to try our little place here that I know should have at least one set of forked rivers. Let's um, see if we can find it. Oh, look at that. We found it. Now let's see if it's close enough to the coast to also have clams. Uh, we are now in French Brittany. Okay, so are we going to be far enough from the ocean to have a forked river, but close enough to also have clams? We shall see. Also, let's have a look at the tribe. How many females do we have compared to males? It's a little bit difficult to distinguish the, the kids' uh, gender because they kind of look the same. Let me see. She's, uh, yeah, she's fine. A bit dumb. Let's see her. Um, yeah, she's a tad slow, but uh, she already has three knowledges that she has learned. So that's good. Let me see. Architecture, yeah, roughly 20% or so. That means we should have pelt huts and straw huts. Okay, let's see. Let's go. Let's see if we can find a nice area here. Please let there be clams as well. Please, 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 please. If my experience in this game has taught me anything, it is that you can go quite far inland before you lose the ability to get clams. So I do think that this place has clam. I mean, it's excellent. The only thing that we are going to lack are goats and sheep because there's way too little mountains for them to thrive in this area okay so let's have a look around yeah i see the rivers i see them forked uh, however i do not see the ocean or oh, actually i do far far out there but uh, i do believe that uh, it's enough it's close enough to to have clams hi horsey where's the rest of your flock you're certainly not alone that's for sure yeah, I do like horses. I tried not hunt them. I tried to just let them live their lives out and then I just don't let anything go to waste when they die of old age. Anyway, so let's do first things first. We need for sure a fireplace. It is quite pretty here. I like this I like this area. I love look at all the reed. Oh crikey fiddlesticks. I love that. Let's uh, see, we can we can get peltas, we can get straw huts, so at least we can improve the uh, archaeology, almost said, the architecture. Archaeology is close to my heart. Um, the architecture now also shows on the pelt huts, and uh, the devs have tweaked so that uh, you get uh, proper architecture knowledge and learning when you're building pelt huts as well as everything else that has architecture. So now you can also use pelt huts to, to properly build your architecture, which is fantastic because there are times when the random seed is as such that you only can build pelt huts. And if you cannot get architecture then, then you have to wait for migrants. Otherwise, you cannot work yourself through to it. Okay, so yeah, let's do these. My crafters, thank goodness we always get um, the... Uh, rudimentary weapons otherwise we couldn't hunt could we so considering that uh, the the skills that we have here now in the mesolithic default is actually everything that came before us so paleolithic and pre so it's not like like they didn't have any weapons or any housing or anything or clothing you know so it, it follows a certain logic as well that we start with certain types of abilities such as huts and, and weapons and stuff Okay, uh, let me have a look at the... Oh, we have four doggies! We have four doggies! Let me see what gender. Yeah, girl, girl. So that means that they can um, get puppies. They should get between one and perhaps two or three puppies at a time. Uh, the thing with the wild dogs is that after they came to, to become domesticated, sometimes like 30 plus thousand years ago or even more is a little bit controversy there not everyone is agreeing on when dogs actually were domesticated but uh, as the dogs were with humans they learned or their bodies evolved so that they could actually live as vegetarians and um, also you know could process starch and stuff like that so the dogs 
that we have now in Europe, Atlantic Europe, during the Mesolithic, could eat exactly the same food as we could and, and be fine. So they will be nibbling on your rosehip bushes and, and cracking a few hazelnuts in, in the autumn. And they will, like the boars, cockily make their way into your camp if they're hungry and try to steal your food. So if fences ever was a need, it will be now, because now you have both the boars and the wild dogs coming to steal your food. And they also steal the food out in nature. But I don't want to hunt the dogs. You don't hunt dogs. That's just wrong. I just can't do it. I just can't. So they will have to be able to roam free and I will just have to protect my camp as much as I can with keeping food in the right storage areas, using fences for, for the storage things I lack. It, it, it is what it is. No hunting dogs. Thank you. Not for me. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, <coughs> check our groups for what we need. Yeah, I need to make sure that not everyone is doing absolutely everything. Uh, and also the uh, limits I'm always setting really, really small to start with. Because everything is so close, isn't it? The system will pick the closest task and, and, and everybody like go two feet away from the doorstep to find it. So the amounts coming into the start will be enormous. So I always put it really low. Let's see. Yeah. And that one to take care of the common materials. That is good. Uh, no, no, I've already done those. Okay, let's move on on the groups. I need this one to do the bit more difficult ones. Like fiber can be a pain in the ass if you only have one. Because you always use so much at the start, you should really just chuck up the amount. Um, won't be taking many of those. I will be needing logs. We need a lot of logs, seriously, because the devs have added so that the, the f big fireplace needs logs to function instead of sticks anymore. It is now the small fireplace that will need sticks to function. So that's um, that's a change. Um, and you can see that the specialists in the um, in the tribe tend to take the specialist options that there are for work spots like the, the crafters, the fishermen, the hunters. Uh, and then they tend to swap around on them based on how many skills they have. Like if they have three, four skills, they don't stick to, to one necessarily for for too long. They could go perhaps a few months and then they want to work on their other skills. So they could be pushing each other out and taking each other's spots in order to, to learn more from their own uh, set of skills and also to learn new knowledges. So basically the, the, the knowledge uh, system that has been um, implemented is it's actually really heavy so so it's it's actually about the historical spreading of knowledge and even though your tribe can incredibly slowly learn new skills and new knowledges you are supposed to rely for the most part on migrants spreading this knowledge to you in order for your tribe to learn and um, since uh, not all of Europe got the same skill set at the same time, it, it is authentic because some areas got it in their tribe before other areas got it in their tribe. Hence the spreading is starting one place and then spread throughout the entire Atlantic Europe as time goes by. So basically, even though our tribe can very slowly learn new stuff, it is the spreading of knowledge by migrants that is kind of the, the point of the patch and, and those can bring you huge batches of skills in one go while when you're doing it for your tribe only like with no help from migrants it will take a lot of practice for them to for the skills to grow um it's something which is rather logic though is that the less skill you have the easier it is for you to learn it, but the higher up you come in your proficiency, the longer time you will take to learn new stuff, unless you guess migrants, of course. And, and the system is um, programmed in such a way that up until the knowledge that your tribe already has, your people will learn the skills fast. But it is also pending your people's grades of traits. So if they have 
portrayed, say, in intellect and skills, they will be a lot slower than those who have a positive grades of skill and intellect. And those who are normal, who have no negative or positive uh, grades of these traits, they will just learn in normal speed. You will, you will soon get a hang of what is normal and what is not. I mean, I have seen people that are imbeciles that has gone through their entire life and basically only have a smidgen of knowledge in a few in a few of the knowledges because they are just not clever enough to, to learn. So this is also a thing that can hamper quite a bit of your uh, progression in these skills and the knowledges because since the tribe is as individual then as our society is today, you will have some people that are more clever than others in some areas and then you will have those that are just not uh, doing well in any areas. There, there are those as well, although I like to think that everyone has a specific area where they do rock art, you just need to find it. So there's that. Yeah, and oh yeah, I like that we have a knowledge window that we can detach. This is also new, I quite like that. So that's a big plus. Uh, yeah, for now they are not happy because they have to sleep in the open. It's the same old song. You guys have to just accept it. It is what it is. Can't work any faster. And I tend to keep my tribe so incredibly busy that they have no time to fiddle about or stretch their bums anywhere. But I need to get up some storage places on fences. I definitely need fences. Because I don't have baskets yet and I don't have pits yet. So, well, it is what it is. Let's see how he's doing. Yeah, he's improving. You can see the green. That means he's learning it this month. And that's also a, a new thing that has been added to the system. That uh, you can see on the overall tribe knowledge what has been learned the past month. Because what already is fastly learned from the tribe from previous than last month is blue. While well, everything new that has come from the last month is green. And uh, something you will very, very rarely see is the color red. Red means that you have somehow managed to lose some of that skill. And the only time that I have seen skill has been lost with all the new tweaks is when an entire generation goes without bothering to practice any skills. And when the original skill holder dies, so does the skills. The skills go with him. It's the same as it is today. If you do not teach your proficiency to others, it will die with you. And that has, hasn't changed since the dawn of man. It's um, completely logic. Uh, that's my mod. I have made a torch mod. So it will probably soon be available for everyone else as well. I've had the help of extremely clever people to make it. But we can talk more about that some other time. Let me see. Do I have any pregnant? No. Sometimes you get pregnant people the second you bloody well land. And here you can go like a year without any. The randomness can really schmuck you over at times. And I don't have any migrants either. But then again, they, they might come and they might not. It's more likely they get pregnant than that I keep getting migrants. It's just the way it is. So there's that. So let's look a little bit deeper into knowledges. For instance, you can see here that you have the ability to build both the belt hut and the small straw hut because you first of all have blue, which is the needed knowledge that your tribe has in order to build this object. And then you have the green above it, which is the surplus of the knowledge in the tribe. So if you need, say you need 18% to build the belt hut, but the tribe has 20, it means that the blue is what you need and the green is what you have too much of. If you have something that is red, it means that you do not have enough proficiency in your architecture knowledge, for instance this one, to build it. So it will be grayed out as you lack just a small smidgen of knowledge to learn it. But your tribe can learn it by continuing to building items that require architecture because everything that require architecture will also grant architecture this goes for all the knowledges that are listed as requirements no matter object so when you have managed to get enough percentages in your architecture say 20 percent or something like that for, for instance this hut 
you will see that the retard will become available to build. If you have things that are completely gone, you know that your tribe does not even know of the existence of these things. So what we are lacking here is the millstone, we are lacking the well, and we're lacking the clay oven. So to get quick knowledge here, we need migrants. Hence the word spreading. So when you first have this knowledge, then you can work your way up to build everything, even though you start them all at grade out. Because everything has requirements and basically everything in game can be reached via building other stuff. It just takes a very long time depending on what it is. It's not like you, you should be allowed to build microwaves in 2K BC. So there is a certain soft cap depending your culture of what you can actually build. So of course in the Mesolithic it will start with all nine knowledges of course but proficiency will be very rudimentary or very low. And when you go to the Neolithic, say you go really late Neolithic, you will see that your tribes are mostly starting with very developed proficiencies in all the knowledges. So timeline and, and culture is super important of what you can actually build and what you can manage to, 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 to work yourself to go through. The thing is, the devs are trying to make sure that the timeline is coexisting together in an authentic way with what you can build. So the fact that you cannot see even roundhouses at this timeline, this culture is completely authentic. Even though you as a player know it exists, the tribe just doesn't. It will take centuries, many centuries, before they even hear about this wonderful new housing. So this is what your tribe will be working towards. As the centuries go by, they get better and better at their skill. In the end, they will have reached the correct culture, which is Neolithic, which is a certain timeline, and then they can build the, the fabulous round houses. And so it goes. Okay, so I need to get more stuff built. I need storage facilities. I need, s do I have storage areas? And I need uh, haystacks. Um, let me see. Yeah, I need that one. <coughs> and I can make peltanners and I can make dryers. Makes sense. Those are very rudimentary. So uh, let's finish the fireplace first. And then I will chalk them to other chores. Well, thank goodness they, they accept a, a certain lack of housing for quite some time before they start threatening to leave. Um, I do actually have quite a few in the tribe that has uh, low fitness and um, they might suffer a bit. But I don't think they have too high will, meaning they won't leave. They will just complain a lot like they normally do. It is what it is. <coughs> so let's see, uh, what are we lacking? Yeah, it's the flipping logs, isn't it? They want logs, these uh, fireplaces nowadays. So there are quite a few new things to this patch. It's actually so big, this patch, with all the details. I am so fond of watching any of the crafters do the napping animation. So the napping animation is the process that we can see where they are creating, for instance, bifaces and they use a, a piece of leather over their thigh to protect themselves while they are bashing a hard stone against a softer flint in order to sharpen up the flint to make bifaces. They could also make uh, really, really sharp blades. I mean, as sharp as anything we have today. Let's see. Uh, crafter, how is he learning? Yeah, he is learning. He's got a bit of skills anyway in woodworking, which is probably why he chose that position. The uh, knowledge experts, the specialists that your tribe start with, they tend to, to want to go where their skills are best used. Okay, let's see. Tanners, yeah, time for tanners because I must build more peltats in order to improve my architecture. So let's Let's do two at the same time. Oh, look at the new notifications. They are um, really handy. You can see, besides the usual one, that you have built this and this, you also see the icon of exactly what it is that you have built. 
I like that. I don't have any storage areas yet. Well, I guess it's time to um, to build them if I can ever find out where to put them. Let's do the common mats first. So um, six now with the mud. So let's do those. Not everything will be gathered now though, but uh, at least now we have all the uh, storage areas for it. See the uh, the icon has changed as well. It looks really cool with the six die. So that's nice. Okay, so stones. No. Yes. I sometimes mix up these so horribly. But it's fine. I can just swap them around. No big deal. Okay, so let's get... Oh, there's a tree there. Yeah, let's uh, try to get rid of it as best as we can. Because uh, we don't have uh, axe knowledge yet, so I need to mix and tricks a bit. So that I can still use that storage area. Let's have a look. Which one is it? Yeah. See? Now tree can be totally fine. So let's see, where do I want my crafters? Preferably somewhere they can sit. They do they do like to uh, go into the roundhouses to sit and craft as well. And uh, that's quite nice. I just hope that further down the line we will have the ability to, to for instance, lower the walls on the houses. We can see what's going on inside. Because with the roundhouses, you also have a shift in how much activities can be done inside compared to before where they had to be done outside. Because now you have proper walls and height so people can s properly stand and, and a lot more space. So hopefully we will see see some of that happening down the line. At least I hope it will make sense. So we can see the beds with the straw and everything. We can see their tables and, and the shelvings they had and, all, and different ornaments and stuff like that. It's actually really exciting. Okay, uh, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that one is double and should really be the fiber ta-da that's done right so now we're waiting for the tanners and as soon as we have more we are going to also build the the dryers because we do need dryers don't we because winter is coming, so we need to start getting things up. Um, let's also protect the food until we have the ability to build proper storage facilities. We don't have that yet. We don't have baskets and we don't have pits. So we need to build um, that we can't make yet. We need a lot of Neolithic because it's a small round pole and they weren't invented during our times. They come during the Neolithic times. Okay, so yeah. It's just a very small, very small one until till we have enough uh, proficiency in our knowledge to, to build proper storage facilities. But at least we need to make sure that the boars and the dogs can't just go help themselves as they see fit. So have our entrance and ta-da, that should be it. And the fences also give um, uh, woodworking knowledge. And you know also a really good thing that the devs remember to do is that when things need repair, when you are maintaining and repairing any object, you will get the learning from this, the requirements that this item has. For instance, the fences, they only have woodworking requirements. So that means you will always get woodworking proficiency from doing them. So that's really, really good. Okay, so things are being built in a timely fashion. Uh, only lacking the last tanner. Yeah, okay. So they will now start to carry everything that is chalked around the, the fireplace to their respective places. That will take a little bit of time. 
up my craft is a bit to get some oomph on the rope making and everything else if you if you have um, a few knowledges that you are a little bit low and you just can't justify to build a ton of huts or or whatever fences you need because it will basically take up your entire space you could ask the crafters to produce some extra stuff to to increase these knowledges for instance woodworking stoneworking and and you know and and weaving weaving is super important because you need that to make baskets so if you ask your crafters to make extra sets of ropes while you are in the building phase you should have very little waste we just need to be extremely careful with the mass production in small tribes as it will be waste unless you take it incrementally and as your tribe grows you will have more and more justifiable need for extra huts more fences more pits more baskets etc etc and more tools so it kind of is, is a natural process of incremental need for higher amounts of absolutely everything so that is um the balance is fantastic. They just need a few small tweaks here and there. And the devs have already done quite a few large tweaks. But I think they're basically getting right around where they should be. Plus minus a few minor ones. We can see as we go along how hard it is, for instance, to, to get to the Neolithic era. And, and, and also then a, a better housing. But um, we shall see. Okay, so just let get the, the food going. All these, uh, some of them can be twice as well, I think, when I have baskets, so that until I get pits, uh, some of these can hold double, because they're only like small one-cell storage areas for now. And this, this is a mud pit. In these mud pits, there are several thousand pieces of mud, and you are going to need it for your roundhouse, because one roundhouse requires 750 mud ain't no joke but the good news is that each gatherer that goes for these muds they carry home at least six every time they go to get mud so it's not like they're carrying one and one because that would be an absolute nightmare <laughs> right so let's have a look at what are you doing yeah she's weaving that means she will increase the weaving skill so that we can actually make baskets because when you create ropes you are learning weaving so we will get baskets very shortly pits however we need proper architecture so we need more housing in order to be able to build the pits but we'll take that bit by bit so I will have to wait for pelts in order to transform them to leather to build the pelt houses, the pelt huts. And in the meantime, we just have to rely on the much hated small straw huts. They are better than sleeping in the open and the fireplaces are better than sleeping in the open. And the small straw huts are then, of course, better than sleeping by the fireplace. That does not mean that they like it. They hate it and they will complain every day when they have to sleep in the small straw huts and some people I have seen actually feel a little bit unwell after having to sleep so many nights in a row in those terrible small huts can you imagine all the spiders oh my goodness ew <laughs> but we have to do it step by step we have no other choice we are a, a newly started tribe and, and it's just the way it is so I'm going to uh, work on more pelt huts and as soon as I have enough straw, I'm going to build a few small straw huts as well. So I've placed down a few dryers. Uh, one, of course, is for fish and the other one is for meat. Then we can dry it so the products can last a lot, lot longer. And as the crafters are making ropes, they are also increasing the tribe overall skills in weaving, meaning we will get the ability to make baskets very shortly. Um, luckily, it is in the start, so we are not going to waste any of the uh, ropes, as they will be used when I'm building the small straw huts, no matter how hated they are. We need them, it's just the way it is. Um, also, I'm going to see how far left there is a little bit left. So yeah, I need to just make sure that they are 
continuously producing. I've put it on infinity so that there is no end to it because it's not like they're so quick they're going to make a hundred in one month. That's not going to happen. So, um, yeah, and if they are making too much, you can just uh, turn it a bit down as well. Put it on uh, a limit. No big deal at all. Let's have a look. Um, yeah. Yeah, those will give um, woodworks, which is... Um, which is good and you also are spending a lot of those fine sticks when you are creating pelt arts and when you are creating absolutely everything that has to do with starting any weapons like axes spears they all use fine sticks and sticks and wooden spears and everything else so it is a high necessity so it's not really any waste mass producing those at least to start with okay so yeah it is a bit slow but uh, I am keeping my tribe busy on purpose so Things take time, which is fine. At least we got uh, one hut. And as we are hunting, you can see we have several pelts available. They just need to be transformed to leather. Um, the groups look fine. I never use more than one hunter, really. And I only take care of those uh, pesky boars because they eat so much of your food in nature. They kind of have to be kept to a small amount, if any at all, to be honest. Yeah, so things seem to be going okay, although it is rather slow. We just need a few more leathers to start building more peltas. And I will also very shortly now start getting up the uh, small straw huts as well. Now you can see on the overall knowledge tribe panel that there are some areas that has a little bit of green this means that we did learn stuff last month which is always good and there is no red there really really should be no red because you should only start losing skills when a generation goes by and nobody is actually performing anything in that knowledge and that is going to be very very rare i mean you have to slack tremendously in order for that to happen seriously seriously slack because um, you should be able to build absolutely everything within all knowledges you have in more or less amounts so yeah wait hello goggies plenty goggies coming to say hello aren't you very close you are only you and the dogs are only supposed to be very cocky when they are in large packs this one seems to be rather alone just passing through <laughs> okay, that's fine. Okay, sniff a bit. Yeah, running away. That is exactly what you should do when you're close to humans still. Hard-coded into all animals to avoid humans. And if they can, avoid each other as well. I bet he's looking for food because it is winter now. So there should be little food out in nature. So he's probably looking for some scraps to steal, which is a theory of how the dogs actually became domesticated as they follow the ancient hunter-gatherers to snack on their scraps of food leftovers when they left the camp so they did then eventually learn that uh, humans equal food food equals survival and so goes the story yeah okay Right. I have also chucked down a haystack to store my hay, my straw. And so that means that we can, in theory, oh, she's given birth. Grats, that is the first baby born in my tribe. That is excellent. Uh, oh, is that? Oh my goodness, it's because it's winter, so here come the boars as well. And they come in huge flocks. I mean, I can't justify hunting everything in one go. It has to be incremental, otherwise we're going to drown in meat and it's going to be a complete and utter waste. We are 15 people, there's no way we can eat all that. It's just not going to happen. Um, let me see, how many are they? Look at the size of them! Oh, that is a lot of bacon. Ah, there are some controversy and some hypotheses and theories that they actually manage to, in the Mesolithic times, cure meat to actually make bacon. 
I know, I know, it's fantastic. But you know, they, they also had popcorn in Peru like 3,000 years ago. And there were things that are being discovered by accident, I'll tell you that for sure. So yeah, bacon it is. We're going to have bacon every day. More babies. Love it. Okay, so yeah, I still must producing some of these things because we are still using it. You see, there's not a lot of, of ropes, even though they've been mass producing for weeks. So things take time and start is the way it is. Well, these are all being repaired and when they are being repaired, you also gain proficiency in the skill they are giving, which is woodworking. Let me see, let's start to um, throw down a few of these, but let's build them far enough away from the focal point which is the campfire so that I can build the, the proper quality huts later so that people will choose to go to those who are closest which should be the quality huts and then they will choose the lesser huts when the other ones are full because they will go by what is closest and not by what is highest quality that is not implemented yet. I do hope it is implemented soon though. Oops, they shouldn't really be responsible for those. A crafter should not ever be responsible for anything building. That was a small mistake. They are now back in tribe responsibility. Yeah, fine, good. One learn from one's mistakes. It happens all the time. Um, so yeah, that should go fairly quickly to build because we do have the ropes and we do have the majority of the straw as well. So that's good. Okay, so watch them work and that is the first small straw hut built. It's two spaces. You are basically sleeping with uh, the spiders. There's a reason people don't like it. I'm telling you it's spiders. It has to be spiders. I'm sure of it. <laughs> <laughs> so that should go pretty quickly building those see how many leather do we have yeah let me see you are yeah and those are still mass producing yeah well we gotta do what we gotta do it's not like we're not gonna use them did you see how much he had learned in one month it was like several percentages and that is really good <clears throat> so when that month has passed where they learn stuff and a new month starts uh, what was green the previous month will become blue so that is then you know considered to be old knowledge and then the new month starts and whatever they learn then will have green and so on and so on so when you reach the tribe overall, which is what you can see on the knowledge panel, the knowledge learning will become really slow and the higher up the uh, max tribe level is, the more difficult it will be to go over because the more knowledge you have, the more difficult it is to learn more. So it's uh, quite a natural logic uh, climb to, to reach the max. Yep, let's uh, place down our pelt out because now we can make another one. Try to make it a little bit pretty. <coughs> so that's good. And also take a look at all the dried meat laying around on the ground. That is an invitation to boars and wild dogs to come have a feast. So we really need to either expand the storage area that is fenced in or we need to start getting baskets and that needs to be done quickly can't have it floating around on the ground because uh, animals other animals will come and eat it up specifically boars and now wild dogs but the wild dogs eat a lot less though than the boars do and also a lot less than you so the the wild dogs are not really the huge problem the big problem is when the big flock of boars come in during winter time and just ravage through your entire stock of, of meat or whatever is on the ground really and not properly stored they they will eat it it's just the way they are 
So we're going to need baskets for all the animal products, all the animal produce. So that means honey, clams, fish and meat. So we're going to need one for raw meat, one for raw fish, one for dried fish, one for dried meat, one for clams and oops, one for honey. That was quite a fence there. <laughs> I'm going to build wattle fences which is also new around those to see uh, the beauty of it and also uh, let my people practice more on um, making baskets skills which is weaving because the wattle fences is a very ancient form of making fences that is uh, containing weaving you have to weave in the sticks or whatever you're using between the poles so that are they are basically creating a, of a wall and it's uh, very pretty I think it's really pretty it's the same uh, process that can be used in for instance the roundhouses where you have the poles that start the walls and then you have these uh, the wattling happening and with mud so you are creating solid walls with proper strengthening inside which is the sticks or whatever it is you're using weaving between these poles in the wall it's a rather sturdy affair and I'm quite happy they added it because it is 100% congruent with the era let me see um, so the problem with making too much, for instance, fences, is that you are stealing people away from their chores. So if you are struggling a little bit with food, be careful to not add too many f section sections of fence at the same time. Uh, fortunately, I am overproducing fish at the moment because it is year one, meaning there will be so much food right on your doorstep that everything you take into the camp will become large amounts you should of course post your group when that happens but uh, I do not want to lose or not have any increase in fishing so I will keep this one fisherman going all the time well hello there little pig I here to sniff your ancestors yep sorry that's their pelt is what it is Let's see. Yep. Yeah. That's. Uh, can I make more here? No. No. No space. Right. Well, just have to wait for the crafters to build more ropes so we can eventually build baskets. Okay, so we do have enough pelts to build another hut. So let's do that now. So that means at least. 369 people can sleep in something that doesn't make them even grumpier or sick for that matter then they already are um, yeah that should go fairly quickly we have all the materials um, so that we have 9 15 we have 15 sleeping spots which is is it one below what we need? How many are we? God, I don't remember how many. I think we're 16. So the, the sleeping spots are changing based on the new housing and stuff we get in the, in the, in the game. So the roundhouse can sleep 8. The big reed hut can sleep 7. The big straw hut can sleep 6. The reed hut can sleep 5. The straw hut can sleep 4. The pelt hut can can sleep three and of course the small straw hut can sleep two so there is a, a natural increase and decrease on sleep spots as more types of housing is being presented to the game and I also decided to put both the hunters and the fishermen on pause because the food was going over halfway to start rotting which means it's an 100% waste and I just cannot abide by that so I will just have to endure a few months of no increased skill in hunting or fishing for now 
um, won't leave it so long that uh, the skill is starting to go red because that will take quite some time so I'm not going to do that uh, to myself or to my tribe for that matter because it, it, it takes a lot to, to get your skills up when it's as high as it is on the fishing. The fishing is the highest proficiency knowledge that this tribe has followed by hunting and they need to be kept like that throughout the generations so they can c continue to increase and increase and increase which is kind of how you reach the proficiency you will reach when you are in late Neolithic. Okay so now I want to continue on the fence. I want to make a small gap where I put a, a gate here as well. So yeah but not too much at the same time because uh, each section is stealing a person for the chore so that's five and six and seven out of my workforce that will uh, attend to the building task. So let's not do too many at the same time. Um, yeah, because they are very pretty, but they do demand, they do demand repairs. And those repairs will also make sure that you are gaining learning from the repairs that you are doing. So the repair intervals has been increased a bit, but uh, the devs have also then lowered the mats that you need. So it is a, a, a natural increase in repairs and hence a natural decrease in materials needed. Okay, so back a bit to the tools and stuff. So when you learn more skills and more proficiency in some of your uh, tool crafting, you will also have the option to build some tools that will grant both fishing and hunting and tool smithing at the same time, such as the hazel bow that will grant both hunting and fishing and also of course tool smithing so then you can afford to post your hunter and fisher group if you are somehow overproducing it is difficult to, to measure how much you will overproduce produce at the start because the first year you're always drowning in all kinds of foods that never have been touched before so you kind of need to start counting all these things more precisely as the years go by it's difficult to calculate them correctly in the first year okay so now we just got the ability to build baskets thank you to the crafters who has been producing ropes day in and day out for many sleeps it is time to secure our animal foods our animal produce and everything so that they are not being chomped on by boars or wild dogs for that matter so here goes and uh, a shocking revelation guys the devs have had the flipping audacity to increase the amount of plant fiber needed per basket to 16 yeah i fainted a bit when i saw that i was like <gasps> how could you <laughs> It's an insane amount, but unfortunately I can't argue because it is actually a logic amount. Who builds large baskets out of six straw or eight, eight fiber? You need more. So I'm afraid <laughs> I cannot argue with the devs here because it is logic what they have done. But it is a small shock, I have to admit. Because I couldn't understand why why am I constantly lacking fiber? I can see I have more than eight. What's wrong? Is there a, an error in the system? And then I went in and looked and I saw oh, they have changed it to 16. <laughs> so yeah, that is going to take a little bit of getting used to. You know, when you have the habit of collecting enough to um, build and then you only collect enough to maintain. And that amount now needs to go up at least twice as much. So yeah, I have to get that into my my memory somehow. Not putting on too small because then I will always be lacking around repair time. So yeah, that was a bit of a, a shock to the system. <laughs> but, but you know, it makes sense. So no argument from me. So of course they will lack uh, 
fiber because I haven't been overusing it. It was difficult to, to calculate exactly when I would get the ability to build baskets. So I only had enough for them to, to keep uh, producing the, the ropes. So, but uh, yeah, that will come bit by bit. Nothing is running away except my food into the stomach of specifically the boars. But that will be remedied very shortly. Look how cozy it is with the torches in front of the, the gate on each side. I actually find it really nice. It's really nice. Okay, so now the baskets are being built. So then that is no longer a huge problem. I mean, I should have made bigger storage areas to start with and then more fencing around, but... I was kind of a little bit uh, cocky thinking I would quickly manage to build the baskets. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's how this went. <laughs> that's how this story went. So, okay, so one, two, three, I have six. Yeah, six is what I need. So, yeah, there's no way I'm just going to make one by one. I'm going to chalk them all down. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> Oh, look at him working on his uh, stone working. Yeah, so good. Look at how fast he's learning. Oh my goodness, it's like vroom. But he will only learn this fast until he reach the max tribe overall. Then it will all go very slowly, based on how high it is, of course, in the tribe. If it's really low in the tribe, then the learning goes faster. If it's really high, then it goes really slow. Slower and slower, the more you actually know. So there's that. Okay, so they are building and building and building. Um, how many do I have going for plant fiber, I wonder? Because there's minus one in camp. It kind of tells me I don't really have enough. But, uh, yeah, patience is a virtue. Okay, let's see. There are a few. Oh! That's the first one made. Which one is it? Yeah, that one should be for fish or raw meat. Yeah, raw meat it is. Um, and then there's another one by the other one, which is raw fish. The other dryer. So there's that. And then dried fish, dried meat, and then clams, and then honey. Uh, then that is sorted and I don't have to worry about that at all. Well, you know, the, the boars as well are supposed to have this human avoiding thing. But uh, they will come straight up to you and basically steal the food right under your nose. That's how scared they are when they are hungry. I mean, it, it does make sense, even though I don't like it. You know, they're supposed to keep a, a certain distance and run away if they come too close to us humans. But it seems that hunger can make them forget. Which unfortunately makes sense. So I can't argue. <laughs> it's just the way nature is. If you're starved enough, you will do things you normally wouldn't. It is what it is. Okay, let's see. Yeah, they're getting done bit by bit. Well, you can see some of the um, things I've built already need repairs. So some of them need repairs after just a few weeks. And uh, I guess that is okay. I wouldn't mind having a little bit more time between the repairs on things that are a bit annoying and demands a lot of materials, such as the fences. I also think that stone fences should, should take a lot longer before they uh, need uh, maintenance. But uh, we will see what uh, what happens as we go along. So yeah, let's uh, try to uh, build fences to see. Oh, and we have migrants. Okay, yeah, they got knowledge, both of them, hunting, fishing, and uh, leatherworking, and they look to be okay in their trade. So we're taking them no matter, just because of their knowledge. But you do sometimes get. Uh, packs of migrants that have zero knowledges. It is more rare though because they always tend to have a lot of the rudimentary ones like fishing and hunting. So 
and they are not many they they will increase by the size of your tribe so if you start on you know um, default mesolithic or, or default neolithic you tend to have roughly between 14 and 16 people in your tribe they have changed this so that you don't start all timelines uh, with the same amount of people so like for instance the very very early mesolithic you will find that you have for instance only seven people you know and then you come to the very very late neolithic and you suddenly have 25 how you start with so it is fairly congruent though because they weren't huge back in those days they, there was not matter of having a tribe with a hundred in it already in the mesolithic it was very very rare it was more that size when they were cooperating to doing hunting parties or, or stuff like that perhaps even trading wives and husbands who knows who knows <laughs> if i was a, a stone age woman and had a husband of 50 i wouldn't mind changing him out for two lovely hunks on 25 <laughs> so yeah there was uh, there was more than and one way to keep a tribe and certainly the amounts varied greatly everywhere where you could find humans okay so it is going so slow with the baskets so i think i'm going to help my people out a little bit by cheating a bit need to be careful though so we don't crop those who are still growing but these look good and they are pretty far from camp as well so let's do these yep perhaps a few more fully grown let me see those to the right here looks okay looking good you two are fine how many do we have 40 yeah that should do it let's uh wait for the tribe to get some more fiber let's get some speed as you're waiting for for things to you know the gatherers to come home with stuff and stuff like that you tend to wait a lot if you if you happen to have too little of stuff so and then you need to to free up a certain amount of workforce to go do these things that you demand of them like when you're using the clear task tribe you are demanding that people are basically stopping in their normal chores to go do your bidding so there's a a, a little um it's a little bit difficult to to get the good balance to start with because you also need to consider how people are working if you have a tribe for instance where a lot of them are fairly clumsy and just you know st stupid you can have the the progress very hampered by this not to a point where you kind of lose the fun but to a point where you need to play differently depending on the tribe that you have you know considering that every tribe is different using the same tactic over and over again might not work well in all tribes it also depends on how clever people are so yeah it's it's quite varied how how people will behave in your tribe right so what do we still need to work towards yes oh the men here absolutely yeah need more architecture for that that means we should get more huts up and going and in the end we will get pits and when we build the pits they will incrementally increase in the amounts we need as our tribe is growing and also as we are getting more of the suits in so they will help tremendously both when you're building them and also of course when you are repairing them so that we can increase our architecture because I do want the storehouse, I do want the roundhouse, and I certainly do want the small men here. Because I want to build stuff with those. I want to make like lily hinges and stuff, you know. So, um, yeah, we got our work cut out for us, that's for sure. This game certainly does not play itself. Another change you can easily see in the game is the changing of human characteristics. Um, there is some controversy on this theme, but DNA does not lie. 
And although it is believed that the migration from Africa happened between 60 to 90,000 years ago, there are some new and exciting evidence that they might have migrated even 200,000 years ago. But we are not going to focus on that today. For today, we are going to talk about how they look. So coming from the very tropical Africa, they would have dark skin for protection against the sun and also by that dark eyes. And as they ventured into Europe through the millennia, their skin turned lighter and their eyes turned brighter. And this, of course, to manage survival much better in the harsh climates of the cold and Arctic Europe. DNA has proven that 7,000 years ago, they still had dark skin, but they had blue eyes. Can you imagine such a fantastic combination? I absolutely love it. And of course, as the millennia went by, people in especially the northern parts of Europe developed even lighter skin to handle the Arctic climate. Okay, so that was a lot of uh, clutter around the fireplace. I'm going to place down some storage areas to put the materials and the tools that I'm crafting. Because I'm of course crafting too much to make sure that my uh, skills are increasing. So uh, let's just get those out of the way quickly. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's it. Uh, also with the human characters is changing, you also have their hair. Uh, not many people are aware of this, but um, during the Stone Age and also parts of the Neolithic, there were no combs and they didn't really have a fine, you know, fine tooth bone combs to manage to properly groom their hair like we do today. So they often had uh, dreadlocks. And um, many people commonly think that people in, in the Stone Age and Paleolithic and stuff did not care for their looks. That is not true. They were actually rather clever in finding ways to, to look good. They would groom themselves by either using sharp shells to cut their hair properly and their beards and stuff. And they also used flint blades to cut their hair. And some of them also used really hot coal from the campfire to singe away some of the hair, I think specifically in the face. So there were plenty of ways they were taking care of themselves. Let's have a look at some of their hairstyles in the game. Look at this guy. He's got dreadlocks and they're cut short in the front and just sticking a bit out in the back. You also have this hairstyle on the females. You can see it's the same and this child has almost the same. You can see his uh, dreadlocks are cut really cool in the back along with the rest of his hair. They probably use flint blades to make this happen. And you can see they are nicely divided. So anyone thinking that they did not take care of themselves, you are not correct. Look at this one. She has them up in knots on top of her head and I find that really cool. That is really cool. There are um, more as well, but you don't necessarily get them all in your tribe. There, there are not many though yet. And I, I'm not sure if they're going to add a lot more, but uh, I think they look dashing the way they have made them. And I also love their clothing. Look at that. This is a parka, which is something that the Inuits invented long, long time ago in order to survive the Arctic climates where they live. And uh, this is something that they used to make in the cold Mesolithic as well. And look, we have the origin of Ugg. Now we know where they come from. <laughs> so yeah, I find them really, really cool with their hair like that. Okay, so my uh, huts should be coming along nicely. Yeah, Peltat is almost done as well. And I think I need to build quite a few more of the small straw huts to fill everyone's need for a sleeping spot. Okay, let's see what we're lacking. Uh, there's not much left, and uh, but it takes a long time to go above what your tribe overall level have. So it will take quite a bit of building, I'm afraid. 
And you know, trying to play like by need rather than by agenda could take very long time, especially when your tribe is small. If you don't get a lot of births, you don't have a lot of pregnancies, and you certainly don't get a lot of migrants, you are kind of a little bit in danger of having a very slow progression on these things, especially architecture, because there's not... It's not like you can just keep building 50,000 huts in order to reach a certain level. You won't have materials for it, nor the workforce. You cannot keep it up. Oh, golly, I couldn't do that because I don't have... I don't have access, so I can't uh, chop any trees at the moment. So let's uh, just place it a bit in front. There you go. So that's another six sleeping spots. Yeah, that should cover everyone. Let's chuck out some haystacks as well to get those done as well. I think I already have one, but the two can't hurt. If I'm going to have all these straw huts, I will need a lot of straw. So two haystacks holding, how much kilos is it? 1.6 ton. That's a lot of wet hay. It should be enough, certainly. Certainly should be enough. We shall see. So I have two of everything. Yeah. Okay, I can see that we don't lack a lot to build more. It is not unbearable, we just need to put in a little bit more oomph. See, we can soon though make the uh, the straw huts and the reed huts and that will help tremendously it could take years though because this is playing by need so I'm not going to play by agenda meaning I'm not going to place down 20 small straw huts for the sake of building my my skills because it's not how it's supposed to be you are supposed to progress through the centuries oh more migrants yeah I'll have those no skills though, but that's fine. Um, so you're supposed to progress through the millennia until you come to the correct culture for whatever you're trying to build. But uh, both the straw hut and the uh, reed hut uh, belongs to also the late Mesolithic. So we will reach it in time. We just need to see how it goes when we are playing it on normal need and not spam everything in order to get the skills we need. It is supposed to be slow in Mesolithic. There was nothing super quick in Mesolithic. Uh, the only thing that was quick was evolution, and that was it. The rest we had to learn by trial and error, and that could be a lot of hard work for very little gain. Well, it was how it was back in the days, wasn't it? We didn't have any technology to help us then we had to use what we had and that wasn't much let me see um, I can put my fisherman back on because it's now winter meaning that the plant foods will not be much uh, how much do I need for that oh almost there not far off now people repairing the huts should actually get me there because I, I do roughly have what I need now of sleeping spots. So, yeah, we just have to wait for the repairs and stuff to do their job. To get us up in our proficiency for architecture so we can build pits. And once we are starting to build pits, then architecture will swoosh, go up. And then we can poof, build straw hut and reed huts. And then we will get absolutely the, the first quality sleep hut that we have, which is the read hut, which is 25 sleep positivity, which I will take any day because I have nothing better to offer people. I'm amazed that they are so happy with only the pelt huts. I'm absolutely shocked that they are accepting it. But, you know, people did think differently. They expected differently back in those days. I mean, today I wouldn't survive a week like this. Are you serious? The spiders would have killed me a long time ago. 
Oh yeah, they were some really hard people back in those days, weren't they? They were, they were survivors. I mean, if you ever see a survivor game, these guys were the true survivors. How do you like my tribe name, by the way? I named it Hobbledy Hoy because I find that to be such an adorable name. Hobbledy Hoy, I think, actually is. Um, uh, a youth that is uh, either clumsy or unruly. I haven't quite looked it up. I just like the word. So hobbledy hoy it is. <laughs> okay, let's uh, see how it's going to go when they do just normal fencing here, not wattle. It doesn't bring um, weaving though, but we already have baskets, so we are good on the weaving. So we can do those that cost a lot less because the wattle fences cost more than the normal fences um what are your skills yeah yeah good keep building because you will build your architecture let me see i have a lot of of um, red grades of traits in my tribe i didn't really go over them all but if you are going to play a default random game you take what comes to you i'm just so glad that my my tribe leader wasn't specifically weak she's only a bit slow which is completely accept acceptable let me see uh, no she's not a uh, a max uh, knowledge holder so this is something i check when i have other people to make sure that they don't uh, take the skills with them they when they die so I need to make sure that if there are elder who are about to die, I need to make sure that they are not the max tribe holder. Because when they go, they will take the skill with them unless they have managed to teach it to others. This is why it's so important to let your specialist roam in the groups and not only stay in the same one. Because then other people can learn from them when they give space to the other group. So you don't need your specialist to be in the same group. You just need others to be allowed to go in the group that they were. For instance, if they start as a hunter, they will uh, have the max skill, which of course they will choose to do the hunting when they have that skill. If they then go to the next profession, then that means someone else can take their spot as hunter and hence learn their skill up to what they have as max. And this is how you save some of your skills. There are other skills, for instance, there are leather working, there are food processing, and these skills are very, very uh, mundane chore based. For instance, you get food processing, processing via doing the, the stocking and the, the reloading and the taking down of food from dryers, for instance, from repairing the dryers, from building them. And then you also get skills from tanning and building the tanners and repairing the tanners. So a lot of the mundane chores uh, involves some skill that you can learn, like uh, leatherworking and also also uh, woodworking and definitely food processing so there is skills in the utter majority of what you actually are doing whether it's uh, in a specialist group or if it is in a mundane chore that you have in the tribe let's see let's get uh, let me see shouldn't take too long because they only cost like how much is it seven seven sticks or so to build these so they are quick to repair, quick to build, and should not take a lot of hassle at all. So that's good. Um, we can see from month to month on the overall knowledge that things are increasing. But there are some things that are a bit more stagnant. For instance, like I said before, the huts, you don't build more than you need most of the time, do you? I mean, it's not normal that you should do that. Unfortunately, until we reach pits, it has to be huts that we build in order to increase our architecture and it's just the way it is it belongs to the era you you did not do rocket science in the mesolithic it is what it is it will take the time it takes and depending on your seat you could end up with only having pelt huts to start with and then it will of course take much longer before you reach a point where you have really good quality huts it's, it is the randomness of the game and it also belongs to the era because not all tribes had all insight in all of Europe there could be a few tribes that were far far ahead of others and they will 
if they migrate from their tribe to yours, they will teach you what they know. And this is spreading. Spreading of knowledge is 100% authentic and belongs to the patch. So, but if you do not want to play it like this, if you don't want the more slow, Mesolithic, more hard work, go Neolithic. The further down Neolithic you go, the more proficiency you have. It's completely logical and authentic. So if you have a little bit of insight into when they were doing this and when they were inventing this, you can go specifically to that timeline or that culture for that matter and find what you're looking for. For instance, the stilted storehouse or the roundhouse or the carved men here. Uh, the Mesolithic men here is a spit painting and not carving or any kind of inscription. They didn't do that back then. Um, at least not that we know. They did cave art. They have done cave art, cave art since the Paleolithic plus plus. So we have plenty evidence that they did a lot of art and they were quite inventful because they did the handprints on the small men here, the Mesolithic men here, by using spit painting. They basically had either paint in their mouth and they spat it over their hands when their hands were resting on the rock surface or whatever surface they used, probably rock. And uh, if they didn't use paint from the mouth, they used reed as a straw to blow charcoal powder through over their hand to make these handprints. And that is also what he's showing on the Mesolithic menia that we can build from the Mesolithic and onwards. And um, I have already tested out these and they were really, really cool to see. And, and when the sun or the moon hits right on them, they are a little bit self-illuminating. And I find that so fascinating to watch. I'll see if we can um, maybe get to the point where we can build them. They cost a thousand stones, which is what the old m normal men here used to cost used to cost and and now the large men here the neolithic men here actually cost five thousand stones to build oh holy fiddlesticks that is going to be hard work i can no longer spam 16 per tribe i don't think i can do that anymore unless i can manage to convince the, tr the, the, the devs that they need to lower the decay on everything that is made from stone or lower the amount of stones needed to build the various men here. I doubt I can do that though because what they have done is actually congruent. I'm the one who is not authentic because I want, I want and I want. Unfortunately that is a luxury problem that they probably would not tend to <laughs> no matter how much I cry myself to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but you know you never know they might change it further down the line depending on whatever else they're adding so uh, nothing is written in stone except the carvings on the many ears they are written in stone yep <laughs> okay let's uh, see um, let's go a little bit f for me okay year two and we have the increase in architecture is almost at the point where we can build better quality huts and I would say that two years research and skill building to get better quality huts so this this might actually be roughly there and thereabouts of what it should take of effort to on normal play by need get to the point where we are right now let's just see if we are almost there okay so my wattle fences need repairs and they demand a lot more resources so unless you have a ton of resources and a ton of free workforce we need to be careful with just adding and adding fences because they, they do need repairs more regularly than they used to and this is of course done on purpose to make sure that we can build more easily more proficiency in the skills that they require so let's um, add a bit more see if we can get to that last little few percentages to get better quality hearts when we do that i can remove a few of these straw hearts because the materials that i need oops no i don't want that uh no you're not gonna crop any of the food bushes that's not gonna happen place it somewhere else so i'm gonna see if i can take some away so i don't waste so much grass or so much straw on oh is that one as well yeah that one needs uh, chopping as well well i can't do it so there you go um need to not waste too much hay 
too much straw on the on hearts that are up abhorred by the people anyway. Oh, it's better than kicking the teeth. Barely. Look, look how cool the, the torches are. And I love the wattle fence. It is so pretty. I really, really like it. Okay. So we are getting closer and closer to be able to build reed hearts. And when that time comes, up they go and down with the small straw huts. I'm going to use the reclaimed material from the dismantling to build the other straw huts. Not too many though, because it's a pain in the peep to keep collecting several hundred straw constantly. And you know, as you are emptying your immediate locality, your immediate area around your camp for straw your workforce needs to be increased in order to get the same amount back because they have to you have to consider the logistics of how far your people have to go in order to come home with the same amount of straw that they used to before they had to go to Timbuktu to get straw so there, there's quite a balancing act here so we need to use other resources as well and not only completely grass down the um, area they have increased the devs, they have increased the grass growing, so it won't be like super bad, but that's just because my tribe is tiny. You know, we're only two years old. Try ten years. Yeah, that's going to be a completely different matter, isn't it? The more people you have, the more straw huts you have, of course, the more straw you will use. You need to balance it by using different types of building materials as well, otherwise you are kind of asking for your workforce to be so large for only straw in the end that all the other chores will suffer. It is a balancing act no matter how you twist and turn it. So uh, let me see, oh yeah that one um, needs, uh, actually I can't believe I forgot to take it away. Right, it needs to go because I do not have access, I do not have access to access. <laughs> nice play and word there Lily, access to access. Okay, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to add it somewhere else and uh, also add a few more so there's a lot of hay needed a lot of grass needed so th the straw will have to be helped a bit so um, I can actually build stuff um, we will suffer our smidgen I'm afraid but we, we need to get proper huts we are year two almost going into year three I don't know how long I can keep my people happy with huts that do not increase any kind of sleep positivity at all. Okay, luck a bit on the benches. Um, let me see. How long? Oh, almost there. Look how close I am. Look, 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 look. We are so close. Come on, guys. Work on the huts. Come on, get your proficiency up. The reason I build so many at the same time is that more people who already have the skill in architecture will uh, go into the, the, the chores of building them so they can get those few percentages that I'm actually lacking. Some of them will have higher skills than the others and those are the ones we need to rely on for now to increase to the few percentages we need in order to get the better quality huts. So if you have several huts going at the same time, the speed doesn't matter. As long as they can work slowly but surely to increase the max overall of the tribe, you are going to get more stuff that you can build as time goes by. Okay then, so now we need people to get more straw and keep building. I might be doing it a little bit stressful, but oh hello, more migrants only one and he has a fairly low hunting skill but you are welcome okay so the grades of these traits are a little bit bob bob and it could also explain a little bit why his skills are so low because it do have he does have a, a, a skill reducing grade of the trait but we all have areas where we rock we just need to find them as time goes by so he is still welcome and he is uh, definitely a part of the tribe okay so we have been working through the entire summer 
in order to get enough straw to keep building and I can smell the reed hut <laughs> it is so close we are basically almost there I mean seriously almost there the 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 percentage I lack is so tiny that I cannot see it with my own eyes <laughs> we are so close I'm not even kidding it's so exciting to see <laughs> okay let's have a look at people oh look at this guy he is a smart dude and look he's got does he have six knowledges he's a smart dude so that's the reason why you have so many knowledges because you don't get uh, all the knowledges there's like no way anyone can manage to get all nine knowledges it just it's so rare I don't even think I've seen anyone with more than seven and I have tested this game for uh, weeks many 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 weeks and I have yet to see it although there has been uh, quite a few tweaks to get it uh, nice and ready for public servers I have yet to see anyone manage to get uh, nine knowledges having nine knowledges wouldn't really make sense either it should be divided on the tribe so this is actually working as intended but when you do have like I said before people who are very smart and very skilled they do tend to learn faster they learn more as well as we can see from this dude here okay so I'm going to add a few more of these ugly small straw huts to boost it a little bit more I mean basically everyone in the tribe should have some kind of architecture skill now because I mean seriously how many huts have I built like 20 all in all at least but well, that looks actually quite cool the way I've placed the straw huts I might just keep them like that afterwards we shall see but um, we better level up now seriously level up to read huts come on we are almost year three. It better happen. It better happen. Just saying. So basically what I am doing, even though I said I wasn't going to, I am spamming a bit because I do not need all these uh, small straw hearts. I'm just impatient. So I'm spamming a little bit to get reed hearts. I just need reed hearts to keep people happy. You can see their time of patience is is up you can see more and more unhappy faces because I I have nothing to offer them and also the food is slow because I'm forcing them to mass produce and to mass harvest straw there's like no break for any of them of course I haven't touched the work hours because that would be a nightmare they would leave me quicker than I can say waffle so I don't even dare to touch the work hours so crossing fingers that this will be it I mean I'm so close I can't even see if there's any red left I just have to, to keep building it is what it is <laughs> and ta-da a few months later we can build uh, straw huts and we can build red huts and we can build pits let's get started okay so let's get down the pits we are going to need quite a few I want one per plant food plus one extra for those that are staples so for there and for here that is eight so the extra two is going to be for the rose hips and also for the hazelnuts so let's get some speed and see them little ants working and of course now as time goes by we have pits and we also can make benches the village is not complete until you have benches to me that is uh, logic complete and utter logic you need benches for the elder to sit and talk and relax because that's what they do they sit on the benches and talk and relax so that is nice and we are just 
coming out of winter in year three and that's how long it took us to build everything with a small smidgen of spam not too bad though not too bad but a small smidgen of spam needed to reach the level of Reed Hut within three years which we have done otherwise it would have taken for instance a year longer or something like that and, and that is quite working as intended either way if you as a player want to play more by agenda than by normal need that is completely up to you there is no set way to play this game under any circumstance so do whatever you feel is best that's all there is to it okay so as time goes by we are now building straw huts while the rest of the gatherers are getting enough reed to make reed huts so this straw hut is basically the same as the pelt hut but we can't hunt to extinction absolutely all animals there are in order to keep more than perhaps six or perhaps max nine pelt huts in one locality so the the hunting is chilled down and instead we are letting the straw huts take over for the pelt huts as they give same as the pelt huts it's um no sleep positivity but it certainly is a better than both the small straw hut and also the fireplace and of course sleeping out in the open uh we still don't have a lot of tools because we kind of have focused a little bit on on getting uh, the storage things that we needed for our food and of course getting better quality hearts so now um, we're gonna chill on the uh, straw stuff and I'm going to uh, dismantle a few of the smaller straw hearts as well and focus more on the uh, reed huts and also the normal size straw huts so because they don't have any miners do they i mean the small straw huts they have miners normal straw huts does not so there's that so now we just need to wait for the crafters to gain enough proficiency to craft better tools and with better tools the efficiency of the workforce increases and increases normally so much that you will have to reduce your workforce in order to not overproduce whatever they are doing and of course this in turn means that that workforce that you are releasing from a group that is overproducing can go find work elsewhere where they are needed and that of course is always good news um, there are other changes as well i'll see if i can remember them all as we go along uh, people that also have food preferences uh, we will go more into that later um, I just love watching them dance that's something I've always been so fond of and I do want to have a look and see first how the dogs are doing they should have had quite a few puppies now oh hello you're very close aren't you are you nibbling on a rose bush yeah you are you are stealing rose hips that's fine we can share a little bit the dogs don't really eat a lot so it's not like the boars the boars are like you can see the chunks disappearing when the boars are eating compared to the dogs who take very little in comparison let me see how many how many do i have quite a few didn't i there were lots of them that one is pregnant Let's have a look. Yeah, she's with uh, three others. She has one puppy from a previous litter. Yeah. They are very cute, aren't they? They look like a, a nice mix of Basenji, Dixie Dingo, and also there are so much husky alaskan malamute thing patterns on them which of course is congruent um i do see a color lacking a bit i have yet to see the black ones they started to appear in europe right around the time where they became domesticated in europe um i haven't studied enough 
to know exactly why they turn black but it is a mutation of course because you won't find any black wolves unless there are specific uh, breed um, made by humans or basically an error from nature which is also how the the silver fox is silver it's a mutation so we shall see okay time to get some more pits up and going because I have increased the amount of plant food that my gatherer is going to come home with so let's see where I can place them see if I can sneak them around these huts try to spread them out a bit to not have everything in one place yep yeah, let's just do a few and then use it for the staples the staples will always be in larger amounts they tend to last longer as well for instance the hazelnuts last a really long time and the rose hips last quite long as well so no complaints from me whatsoever and they do love honey everyone loves honey and everyone hates the roots the roots is pure last resort survival only because you do you do dig into the ground and just drag up the roots and just basically eat them as is um, I have never had that type of food but uh, some people who have done some wilderness training and survival training say they taste horrendous but they do keep you alive when the going gets tough so if it's a choice between life and death people will eat the roots whether they like them or not it is just the way it is right i would like to build some more fences i want to see how these stone fence behaves just uh i'm not going to make a lot of it i'm just going to check the decay state and stuff like that uh, let me see these these guys can get a small half moon or something Let's see the thing with with having so many fences is that when you do need repair you need to drag people off their normal jaws and something will suffer so it is um, a little bit difficult to, to balance the amount of fence needed versus the amount of work workforce needed. What can you spare and stuff like that. Um, perhaps down the line we will get the option to actually pick someone who can uh, do specific chores. Like if he's really quick with say stonework then I can choose him to do the repairs. But uh, we will see if that comes down the line. You can also, of course, create the group and only allow them to do all the repairs and the buildings, but you still have zero guarantee that it is the best viable that will be in the group. It just does not work like that. There already is a system in place which makes sure that it is viability as well as proximity to task that helps decide who is going to do a task and uh, they tend to always be the ones who have the best uh, ability to do the chore but of course if they are in South Africa doing another type of work they will not be able to do it so someone else has to and it will be vicinity again for the next person and their viability and so it goes on the thing is if your tribe is really really busy you couldn't end up with only the worst people possible doing the chores that kind of needs uh, some um, proficiency in order to do well but uh, most of the time uh, people are sorting this really well themselves in the tribe and uh, when people come back from being far away if they have proficiency they tend to take over a task that perhaps others have started so uh, for now this system actually does work even though it has a few hiccups I mean it, it's going to be absolutely impossible to figure out a way to make sure that people are first of all adhering to their tasks when they are far away instead of just running into camp for everything because that is inefficient and then it's going to be impossible to make sure that only the best viable always gets the job that's not going to happen so i think uh, we have to be satisfied with how things are today 
maybe down the line they will figure out something really clever uh, I can't think of anything and uh, but I'm not complaining either I'm just stating that this does happen that you do get a bit more clumsy people to do the work because the clever ones are far too busy far too far away and that's just the way it is I personally think that this is actually how it should work because it's the same in real life you don't always get the best qualified people for the job because the best qualified people might be busy elsewhere and that's just how it is in game as well let's have a look at our dogs okay they have gone down a little bit in size they used to be eight and now they're six so i think two have died from old age uh, we only had one pregnancy on the dogs so yeah let's have a look how they're doing there's one there one there see they they don't always stay in their packs so now we have three that are kinda on their own they tend to do some herding and then they tend to come more together which is what herding is they are herding their pack <coughs> so let me see yeah there are quite a few who are, are alone around but they will come together at some point see when they are single when they are alone the wild dogs they are not as brave as when they are in a pack so you will rarely see a, a single dog coming into your camp unless it's one of those that started to trust humans because it has been eating from our camp before without being harmed you know so that could be one of the ways where it started the domestication of them and then you get really really brave when you are many in the pack so it, it's quite logic actually so yeah so the dogs are going a little bit down maybe they only got one puppy I didn't uh, I didn't pay attention to it but uh, I won't hunt them no matter it doesn't matter how many they become I can't I can't do it it's just wrong <laughs> it's just wrong either way if you hunt your or the dogs die without getting babies which is really rare uh, they will immigrate again there will be new appropriate packs of prey coming into your area on a very regular basis so it's not like if you are losing all your dogs they will never come back that's not going to happen if the area is appropriate for a specific species they are more than likely going to immigrate to you at some point or another repeatedly so that is a well working system I can already see the evidence of me using too much of my workforce to build new stuff because um, my straw huts are starting to suffer there is too little material going around for the repairs needed but then again I've got like nine small straw huts or more maybe more I can't quite remember anymore so uh, this is also a balancing act everything is a balancing act you cannot get away with it and just play hobbledy hobbledy it's not going to work like I have done now I've added a large section of stone fence which each section takes at least a one person away from their normal chore and since people do not likely go away from the fishing or the hunting group everything else will suffer so we need to be really careful so we don't break that balance because I just broke it you can see I do not have enough repair materials for a few of my huts because I added like 15 of the stone fence sections and um, yeah I'm going to have to do something about that but it's not like I didn't know that this was going to happen I was just kind of hoping that not all the people going to do the stone fences would be those that were actually trying to get enough straw so this is something which is a little bit difficult to control but uh, you know if it always happens it's not random you know it will always happen so then you should of course play accordingly you know it's, uh, this is the point of this playthrough to check out how things are in the game with all the new things that the patch has added and I can clearly say if you have too many building tasks 
That hasn't changed since the game started, by the way. If you have too many building tasks, other things will suffer. Most 100% guaranteed. It is the way it has always been. But the, the thing is, now we have more things that we need to repair. And the repair is more often, even though it does not take necessarily more material. So, yeah. So, adding like a, a ton of fences when you have very little of one material that you need to keep updated, like nine plus huts, is not so smart. So, I should have thought of that before I placed down like 15 stone fences taking away half my workforce. So, that wasn't the the most clever thing. But now I can see how it, how it is. Now I see how it's behaving in this patch. Point made. <laughs> Game one, Lily zero. Okay then. <laughs> right, so I have reduced the building. Oh, oh, we can make hazel bows. That is amazing. That means we will get both toolsmithing and hunting and fishing by crafting one tool. That is fantastic. Yes. Job crafters, here we go. I'm gonna let them produce like heck. Seriously, um, let me see how many should I have. Should I have 20? Yeah, do 20. Do 20. Okay, so that means I can go down on some of these. Oh, is that one 10? It can go down to I don't know four. Those need to stay, these need to stay, and yeah, the rest can stay. Yeah, okay. So now we are going to need to use the ropes. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. If we have to migrate due to critical material lack, then we have to migrate. It is all in the name of science. And also in the process, we torture our tribe a little bit. <laughs> it's all in the <laughs> We are working our way to becoming a very proficient tribe. It is unnecessary evil to do a little bit of critical resource spam it is what it is so here goes nothing <laughs> we'll see how far we go um we have started to um get enough people to go get the materials we need because i've had to pause some of the buildings i had going on like i paused the majority of my uh, stone fences only have one up so that i don't drag away half my workforce every time there's stone in the camp because that will will make all the other things suffer and we could clearly see that there was no way enough straw being brought home to camp because they were all busy doing the uh, the stone fence so that has been sorted at least so now there should be more straw and and yeah and things should slowly come back into having a good balance between workforce needed for this and this and then income to maintain tribe happiness and tribe health so so that's good you can see how it goes as we play let me see um how are we doing with read because I want to build read huts okay we're only we're not even 50 so yeah well I'm not going to stress with them unless the rot becomes over halfway then I have to help them a little bit because I have kind of made it difficult for people to actually do their job well because I've been building so much all the time and when you have so much that you have built you will also have to do many repairs and they will drag away people from their chores it is just the way it is we cannot get away from that however you're not supposed to have a million things when you are such a small tribe it's supposed to be gradual as you know it will follow the size of your population so that you don't suffer from lack of workforce uh, and this is a balance we will all have to work on individually as players per tribe because no tribe is exactly the same they will differ a little bit from tribe to tribe uh, and I find that really really fantastic at least it keeps me on my toes with regards to getting the balance right I also am a, a type of player that like to stay for decades in the same area so 
so that is kind of the main agenda for me is to stay really long in the same place uh, and when you are wanting to do that you need to be extremely careful with your critical resource waste if you are wasteful you are kind of inviting yourself to having to migrate whether you like it or not if you want to stay in the same area for decades you must be extremely frugal on all all your resources not only food everything so there's that but of course if you are a type of player that doesn't really care to stay in the same place all the time you like to to be nomadic and and wander around the, the european map sure that's fine as well then you can have parties all the time and like have do all the the harvesting of all the food in one year having 1200 rose hips and 2000 uh, hazelnuts at winter have a proper feast i mean it, it's all up to you how you wish to play the game we are all different and everything is acceptable uh, that's the point of the game play it the way you think you will thrive best with at least that's what i am doing Right, so we now have enough reed to build our first reed hut. So here goes. Um, the um, plan is to build at least three so that people can rotate on who sleeps in it. And since the reed hut is the first and the only building I have that grants a positive uh, sleep, um, people will be happier uh, and we can get rid of some of the unhappy faces, the angry faces that some of the people have, hopefully, and uh, then uh, we will just have to wait and see as time goes by if I can manage by normal play only to reach eventually the big reed hut and also of course the big straw hut. But let's see how long that is going to take. It could take years because if you are playing normal then of course if you don't have the population for it you cannot justify building a ton of other huts to build up your architecture if you are impatient though and want to have this agenda go for it build to your heart's content but do remember workforce versus income versus building versus repairs it is a balancing act so you might burn yourself quite a bit before you find your balance but don't give up you will find it in the end if you want to that is oh and now we can also make the large benches sure let's have more large benches for the elder to sit and ponder that is excellent just um nah let's place them sideways i think yep one on each side that'll do it sure sure might be a basket in the way let's we'll find out if we get inaccessible issues then we can just move it a bit no problem in the slightest look at all the houses i have so many houses it is more than i need truth be told it is more than i need but it's not an insane amount for year four it's not an insane amount so it's not too much almost said metagaming so um, I'm quite okay with with the way I'm doing things there will be tweaks coming in today to the game hotfixes and small things that the devs wanted to change based on some of the feedback from you other players so that is great and it's going to show in my later years because I will update and then continue to play so oh look at the retard coming along look look at how many they are going for the task there are several people running in and out with with reed so this is what i mean when you see a large chunk of your workforce is doing other stuff than their chores so building small portions at the time is actually really smart and i always seem to lack stone for these never have enough stone I'm going to have to actually remove it all together. Look at that. Now we have a large or um, a normal reed hut. And I can't wait to get the large ones because they are great. And in the end, we will have roundhouses in the end.
God knows how long I have to play for normal and non-spammy in order to reach it. You're not supposed to reach it at Mesolithic. Come on. I need to be patient and not just run along before I can crawl. So there's that. Yeah. I'm probably also going to remove a few of the small straw huts because they are... I hope nobody chooses them over the others, which is why I've placed them so far away. Because, you know, it, it is not by quality where people choose to sleep, it is by vicinity. So whatever is closest, they will go to. So I am going to move away those two straw huts and only have the better quality closer to the focal point, which is the fireplace. I'm also going to place all my tools, uh, storage areas around the fireplace area. So when people are coming home from work, they will first of all place the tools where they belong and then they will go to the closest food and also the closest place to sleep after they've eaten. So that there is a, a certain um, balance that you need to do there as well in order to manipulate the people to do the things that you feel is best for the tribe. So that is a very important part that you as a player are doing that the system will not do. So even though the devs do not particularly want to increase the micromanagement of the game, if you do that by yourself, if you do add a little bit of micromanagement, you can have an extremely efficient tribe. You just need to be very vigilant and keep your eyes open and learn the small tricks and, and the mixing of how to do things in order to get it extremely efficient. So there's that. Um, the lumberjacks will never have work with me because I don't trust them to not cut down the trees that I want close to my camp. I find that so aesthetically pleasing that I don't want them to be gone. So yeah, I'm just going to manually ta take a few of the trees further away at the time as I need them because we need them for the uh, fireplace as well, don't we? It's, it's the fuel, isn't it? Um, I'm going to remove a few of these smaller ones and replace them with um, better quality. So let's have one of those. Oh, yeah, that's fine. It doesn't have to be exactly on the dot. It's annoying though that I can't do it exactly, but fine. Fine. Okay, so how's the food looking? It's looking fine. But sometimes when I get so immersed in any kind of testing or things that I'm doing, I forget to, to keep a lookout for the for the food income. And poof, suddenly you have someone saying, blah, 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 is threatening to leave. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and I go look around and I say, oh, there's no food. Okay, then. Right. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot to keep an eye on. Yeah. Okay. Right, so jumping forward a little bit, I also want to talk about the um, implementation of people's food preferences. So what we have is that the tribe is uh, randomly having different tastes on food. So they will like one type better than the other. Um, what I can say for sure is that everybody seemed to love honey which is sweet sugar makes sense and they seem to love the raw fish and the raw meat but this can change from tribe to tribe of course because it is random uh, you might however rare have tribes where basically half the tribe wants the same thing and that can be a bit of an issue but you can control that as a player. Again, a little bit micromanagement. And I think the devs want to reduce that a little bit so that they are not too many going for the same food over and over again. Because if it is during summer and people are continuously eating all the meat and all the raw fish, then the plant food will be rotting and it will be a severe drain on your prey and also on the fish stock. So that is something that you can control if you are using the configuration in all your storage areas, including the open ones. They also do have configuration. You can place so that nobody can touch the, the meat or the fish 
during the summer period while all the plant food is available and then they have no choice but to eat whatever is there and also for sure is that everybody hates roots they do not like roots that will probably never change it's the same in real life as well whoever loves the roots are in the utter minority 100 percent sure <laughs> it just is not good so there's that so the food preferences seem to to balance quite well most of the time where people are helping themselves from a little bit of this and a little bit of that so not everyone is going specifically for a thing uh, I do also think that the devs are considering to use a, a, a different system with regards to that your members will try to go for the things that are closest to rotting away first so that we have a much less waste on the food products and this I think will be really really well we, we really need something like that I would love to see it and um, that will help a lot in making sure that we don't waste too much of our food resources okay so I am going to need to do some manual chopping of trees because there is no way in beep I am letting any lumberjack near any of my trees in my camp so and we need them because the fireplace needs logs to be restocked and that's how it is and uh, I was kind of hoping for a certain animation where you could see they are dragging the logs to the campfire and they're just pushing it in, you know, a little bit in at the time as it burns, you push in more and more and more, kind of like they do today in some of the wilderness uh, movies and stuff. So, yeah, it might come later, but at least we know they are using five logs per restock, but it does take many days. You know, it takes many sleeps, many, many weeks. So uh, it is actually um, a, a logical time between when you need to restock the fireplaces. So that's, uh, that's quite fine. There will always be trees. I mean, if you're running out of trees anywhere, you have done something really, really wrong. And then you need to migrate. That's just the way it is. Look how pretty that is. It is so beautiful. The graphics are so amazing. And there can be so many beautiful screenshots taken and shared with the others. So much beauty in this game. I am so in love with this game. I have waited for this game for like 20 years. I'm not even kidding. I have always wanted a game where you start in the... Mesolithic or even the Paleolithic for that matter where you have a authentic progression as far as it is possible through the centuries through the Mesolithic old Stone Age small whatever small Ice Age whatever all the Holocene places in everything I want it all and then finally coming to the Bronze Age and all these things and, and experience what our ancestors experienced to only a very small degree of course but i find this extremely fascinating and you also learn a lot about your ancestors when you are playing this game i absolutely love it so yes it's a yes from me <laughs> okay so my tribe leader won't live a lot longer i just hope that the new leader we get will be strong enough so I can increase my workforce because at the moment she's so weak that my workforce is back on default everything is on default but then again I normally only touch the the, the work age and, and not the work hours so let's see how long she's gonna last it won't be long um, you can see on all her traits how all she is getting as well you can see everything is being reduced there is red where she was blue before because everything is going down and down and down and also when they are roughly 10 sleeps away from death they get a skull so that we as players can see that they are nearing the end of their life and um, yeah it's it's stark to see isn't it it's a stark to see but it is the, the circle of life you can't get away from it 
cool let's uh, do something a lot more fun let's have a look at how our goggies are doing yeah oh there's quite a few of them now none of them are pregnant though but there might be some very very young ones here like zero years old so for each avatar one in-game year is five years for them so even though you have played now that I've played five years it is not five years for the humans it's 25 so it's basically an entire generation look at all those mushrooms dude I'm gonna have to to make some mushroom parties here I think well he's not what not then I can chill on the fish and give the fish and the, the meat a small break let's see if they can come home with a a good bunch wouldn't mind that at all um, what are those yeah those are my straggler group covering some of the tasks that not necessarily everybody is doing but is needed so they are nibbling on the mushrooms but I said like earlier I said they don't eat much and they don't so it's not going to be a huge waste unless the packs are getting so large that you can see that the entire patch of mushrooms is just swoosh swoosh gone don't want that at all so let's see if they come home with some mushrooms pity about the mushrooms they they rot so fast don't they and I do have pets so they will last longer but you know it's not long they're gonna last anyway they don't last long in real life either it's the same thing hello I do like the the way they look they're very detailed aren't they so detailed it's the thing with this game everything is so flipping detailed it's a bit creepy at times oh look at the little one hello <laughs> did you see him small right let's uh, get back to camp and we already have 70 mushrooms that they came home with so I just put them on pause otherwise it will be a waste absolutely and um, I think oh there she goes thank you for the years you served with us who did we get let's have a look oh right well it, it's not the worst at least we can increase our labor age one notch it is better than a kick in the teeth so I'll take it but he is already quite old isn't he yep need to reduce a little bit on these because we have so much food that needs to be eaten up I'll just uh, turn down a little bit on the work spots and then see how that goes um have added a few more pits because of the income that is increased I placed everything on 50 now because we are over 30 people so it's time to increase the amounts that the gather should come home with of certain types of food so we'll just have to adjust it as we go along and hope we don't waste too much and also with regards to the leadership that we just had uh, there has been an implementation that the previous leaders uh, legacy should be uh, become a tradition in the tribe so whoever is taking over as a leader after someone else dies will try to keep the same policies as the previous leader did when they started their reign uh, of course if they have different traits that might have negative or positive grades for that matter they can change the policies um, and you as a player can try to change the policies as well but you will still be restricted by the limits that the current leader has set no matter so the change is just that it is traditional leadership and that can take generations to go away from so it's it's rather authentic isn't it so I quite like that right so I have 
almost enough to build another reed heart. I need 75 for the reed heart and it's just a few away from it. So I am going to place down the reed heart. Let me see. Um, yeah, just as long as it's placed near the the focal point so that people will choose this above any other hearts or lower quality hearts. I'm happy. So if we ever manage to get to a point in the tribe's lifetime where we have roundhouses, then these uh, reed huts will be taken down and the entire settlement will have uh, a nice amount of roundhouses instead. So roundhouses has a 75% increased sleep positivity. I mean, it is a must have. So this is definitely goal number one for this Mesolithic tribe to live long enough and through Neolithic era so we can actually get it. Because then you're going to live in a heap of luxury, seriously. That is just, it was so great testing it. I tested for weeks and it was so nice and it's so beautiful. Just just wait till you see it. Oh, oops, food is going really fast down here. Okay, so let's get some fishermen going and some hunters going. Rabbits do for all incoming. <clears throat> Let me see. Yeah, you can go for the berries at this time. Come on with some nice buckets of blueberries, strawberries, all the berries. Yeah, look at that. Love it. I love that you can see the progression when you hover over it. You can see the amounts they're coming with. Just chalking on reed upon reed upon reed bunch. So the roundhouse also needs reed for maintenance, but you only need, you need 75 to build it, same as this one. So it just shows how much more economical the roundhouse is compared to any of the other reed houses. And I will happily spend 35 reed every year or every two years because the roundhouse takes a lot longer to need repairs because it's much better quality, isn't it? So you will use a lot less materials than you normally would on either these reed huts or even your big reed huts. So it's definitely a, a large economical gain for reed to use roundhouses above any of the other reed constructs. So I added a few more pits because uh, when autumn is coming, I am going to see if we can have a hazelnut feast. That's actually going to be so fun. Okay, let's go check our dogs. See if we can find one. Oh, that one is really close, isn't it? Is it alone though? No, I think there's more with him, which is probably why he's uh, so close to the camp. Let's have a look, see how many are with him. One, two, there's two. Okay, there are two. Look at them staring into us. I can't wait to tame them and have the puppies play with the kids. Oh, that would be so adorable. I need that in my life. We all need that in our lives. Seriously. <laughs> They are walking quite close to the humans though, aren't they? But they, they do have the right description. They are running away. So the, the coding that they should not be too close to humans is functioning as it should, unfortunately. But look, they're running into the camp now. And they are six. That's a little bit spooky, isn't it? Look how pretty they are. They are representing the entire selection of colors and textures these three brown light gray and dark gray look how cocky they are they're just casually walking into the camp <laughs> i love it unfortunately though for the goggies there will be no food for them here because i have everything either fenced in or in proper storage areas 
But if you come every day and allow us to play with you and have you in our camp, we could come to an agreement. We feed you and you become our best friend. I think that's a great deal. What do you say, Gogis? <laughs> I'm really in love with these dogs. Look at the cute little one. Look at the cute puppy. I want the puppy. I want the puppy. Oh, are they going after my human? No, they're not. No, they're not. They're running away, right? They're herding. Yeah, they're gathering their... Uh, their pack. That's a large pack. Seriously. I might actually be a little bit worried if, if I met them in real life. At least wild dogs, right? Okay, so we have migrants. Yeah, good. Good, good, good. I'll take those. Any day. Uh, actually, I'll take all migrants. Because uh, my uh, birth rate has been atrocious. And I'm getting so many old people now that uh, my tribe is just shrinking and shrinking. But you know, it is the randomness of the seed. You can get a lot of births and you can get basically none for years. It's part of the game. It's how it works and it is authentic. It's uh, working exactly as it should. Also, something else new that we have got is that the developers are now giving us not only reed, but also fiber from our gatherers cutting and cropping tall grass no joke it is true so now we have even our higher access to reed we have a higher access to fiber this means that we can stay a lot longer same place it means that we have more than one way to get both fiber and reed we have more plants we can choose between to get what we need and this is fantastic. I, I can't believe this hasn't happened before. You know, I didn't think of it, did you? Well, they did. Here we are. I love it. Best thing ever. <laughs> right, so I am testing a mod. So this is why you can see I have the white awnings instead of the normal brown. Um, it's just a, a, a short test. I'm not going to keep it on long. Um, I just wanted to show you that uh, there are mothers here who are working on changing things in the game, making it different, more beautiful, more variety and stuff like that in the visual. And I, I think that's quite cool that they are doing that. I wish more people would do that. Okay, let's see. Still have a way to go to get the big reed and straw huts, and of course, uh, also this built the storehouse. But we have quite a bit now. Yeah, that one is going to need Atlantic Neolithic culture, which we do not have. Our entire tribe is Mesolithic only, and this is also the way to control that we cannot build, for instance, roundhouses in 10k BC because that would not be right under any circumstance so the system is, is quite uh, quite well thought out okay so there was an update a hotfix that i have updated and you can see there are a few changes uh, one of the changes you can all see is that they have now added so that we have overview over everything that has been created and what it contains and also its repair status if you want to uh, calm it down a bit, just press the letter K. Pressing K once takes away all the icons and the, the, the repair status and all these things on all the avatars and all the objects. Pressing K twice takes away the entire user interface, so it's just a blank screen. If you then press K again, you will have everything back. So I've already started building my third reed hut and I'm probably going to remove a few more of the small straw huts. I have more huts than I need and I am gathering more stuff than I strictly need. I'm not looking to live here for several decades but I do demand for myself to live at least one decade because it's not like I'm going to change my entire methodology with a new patch I still want to have the kind of thin line where I follow 
a, a non-wasteful agenda. So even though I can, you know, spam and spam items to get higher and higher proficiency, and by that also use all the critical materials up, I don't want to do that because I, I would not want to do that under a new circumstance because that is, to me, not how the game should be played. It is not authentic. They didn't do it back then either. And although we do have the freedom to do exactly as we choose with the game and the utter majority of you guys will do that and all up to you, nobody else. I choose not to. I want it to be a bit more authentic. The ability to push the game is fantastic. I have never seen a game I can push more than this. It's great. All the things that this game teaches me is great i love it so i just hope that they keep this option open and that they are not forcing us down a particular path but i do i do want us to continue to have choices on how we want to do things and also then of course different outcomes of whatever we're choosing to do right so my leader is nearing the end of his days he doesn't have long left and also by this he has for a while now had the policies to the absolute maximum of what he's allowed to do by the system and that is also the system default this means that only adults are allowed to work in the tribe so i have almost half my workforce not working due to this um this is in my opinion not completely congruent because there is no way that the children down to like year six at least had nothing to do or were not set to do anything they were work for everyone at any age i mean even the elder ones even though truth be told they did not live till they were 76 back in those days it was roughly around 40 perhaps 50 if they were lucky so it's not completely authentic there either but uh, having children down to year, you know, year eight or so working is quite normal uh, for those days. It's um, it's fairly congruent. Um, so it's a little bit uh, killing my efficiency that the 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 default labour age is the way it is. Uh, I need the younger ones to take uh, part in the work as well and also some of the elder I mean 70 plus sure enjoy your last years that's not what I mean what I mean if if it is a life and that survival thing everybody needs to chip in with what they can no matter how little every little helps and I think that should be reflected in the labor age for default setting and especially when we players have absolutely zero say in this it's, it's a little bit like an evil circle because as long as it is age and charisma that mostly decides who is going to be the next leader you are always going to have that the elder will always be the next leader because as you grow older your charisma will increase and increase and increase so the younger ones who have are healthier uh, uh, stamina will never be leaders meaning you will forever have hampered policies you will forever have at least two ticks restrictions on absolutely everything you're trying to do it 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 hampers our ability to tricks and mix with the policies for instance when there is a famine when you need uh, a large amount of one resource in a short amount of time uh, these things we used to f uh, mix and tricks with the policies to do before but when the leaders came they are extremely strict in their policies and there's nothing we can do to override them and this is something i've also mentioned to the, the devs that all the ones who are becoming leaders after year five or so in your tribe are all elders and they are all so harsh on their restrictions and even though it's just a matter of a few notches those few notches can actually make or break your tribe i have experienced it so many times 
So when you are forced to not work, when you are below, for instance, the age of 10, it will show on the tribe as the smaller the tribe is, the more need you have for absolutely everyone who can walk and talk to do their share. And if you want to play long term, you need to make sure that when your tribe is large, that it is the majority of your workforce that is in labor rather than the majority sitting idly on their bums. This is not going to work in any society in the world everyone has to chip in so i just hope that somewhere down the line they will try to include more age groups in the default or somehow manage to change the leadership so that they don't go completely down to what is at the moment the default settings we will see what they decide in the future we have quite a few dogs now and we also have one that is pregnant that's nice i'm just gonna continue to let them be on their own and uh oh that's sweet when they die from old age uh, my tribe will waste nothing right so as my tribe leader is growing older and older i just cross my fingers that the replacement uh, leader will have uh, less restrictions. Yeah, there it goes. Thank you for your years, Mr. Leader. Okay, we have a little bit better conditions. So this is not the worst, is it? Because you can have more people working now. You have a, a larger workforce, hence you have a much higher efficiency already by just a few persons in the tribe. So this is actually good news. And another change to the game that we haven't talked about yet is the achievements. Uh, unfortunately, where I am doing my testing, I have so many patches that I have to restart my tribe all the time. But achievements are so fun. Um, the thing with the achievements, they will pop up, of course, as you are reaching the goals that the achievement is asking you to do. And for every milestone you have with the achievement, you will forever have it on your Steam page. Uh, I'm not sure if the devs are going to remove the milestones per large update in the future so everyone can start afresh all the time. Uh, but if they do that, they really, really should have a Hall of Fame for who has the best or the quickest uh, reaching of so and so much achievements in, you know, in that patch or in that uh, version. Uh, I think that would be prudent to do for everyone who has worked hard to, for instance, reach the max one, which is Legendary Tribe. I I fear I won't be able to do it until the devs are going on holiday for several weeks. I think that is when I have to, to do my achievements that are quite difficult to do. Anyway, and also the Steam Cloud, of course, where you save your games and you can go back to your games on any computer that you are using that has the game. So it's not like you must be completely locked to a computer in the house. You can use any computer in the house that has the game on it so these are good things this is progress for how we as players can choose to play and also where to play so that's good right so i probably have to start adding more huts and removing more of the small straw huts um, oh, I love their clothing. I so love their clothing. It is so cool. It goes so well with, with their hair and everything. That is really, really stylish. So, right, yeah, back to what I was saying. Uh, I need to remove the small straw hearts. They are just annoying, aren't they? People hate them anyway. And I'm going to place down a few more of the pelt hearts instead. But behind those who give sleep positivity, so they are not chosen before the read hut. I think that is rather um, important to try to keep people happy whether they want to or not with regards to the hearts. So I've taken away three, six, six of the 12 that I had or did I have more I probably had more I can't even remember but you can see that the tribe is slowly but surely growing to become rather large however I don't think I'm going to build any fences around the camp because my population is fairly low 
even though we are now in year six, I still am cursed with very low amount of pregnancies. And like, I think I, we have had two or three migrants in these six years. And I think if I think two of those groups were actually only one person in it with no skills or any proficiency, any knowledge. So we have been we've been fairly unlucky, haven't we? But uh, I think we're doing quite all right anyway. Playing normal, you know, by need is a slow process. So if you are impatient, then the early Mesolithic with bad luck is not for you. You should go to the late Neolithic where you basically have more or less everything you need apart from a few things due to a uh, few skills lacking um, but I also want to play the Neolithic I want to play with roundhouses I want to play with storehouses and I 100% want to make wonders in different sizes with both the Mesolithic men here and also the Neolithic men here I have already planned what I'm gonna do I have so many plans I just need to find the time to do it so yeah can for instance can for instance almost make stonehenge like it authentically look i just lack the flat ones on top of the biggest ones that's kind of the it really because you can manipulate and find an environment that has the stones that are laying down the way they do on stonehenge as well on the ground so if you look around a bit to try out a few localities you can actually find a very authentic looking um locality so that's going to be something i'm going to go hunt for i i like going finding these odd things to to do with i'm also going to make the offington horse with a fire that is such a hard task because you need to transfer the authentic scale from the Offington horse and to whatever area you are putting it in and if you are a perfectionist you will take forever to get the skeleton right and for them to start building it with fire so this is going to be really interesting it might take quite some time if I constantly have to restart all my tribes but uh, I just have to work faster don't I challenge ahoy <laughs> I accept Gladly. <laughs> so I have done uh, quite a few changes to the tribe. I have removed the stone fences. They were just such a pain in the beep to keep uh, building because uh, it kept. Oh, yes. Hello. I'll take you guys or oh, you woman. No skills again and singular, but she's a female. She can have babies. Always good. I know it sounds weird uh, if we're talking like this in our time and in society but back then oh uh, yeah i'll take you woman babies thank you <laughs> heck yeah so yes i removed the uh, the the extra wooden fence around the left side have altars and also the stone fences around the uh, you can see the uh, small straw huts and I removed all the straw huts on the complete other side and added more pelt huts instead. So I didn't really get more houses, I just got better houses, you know, and, and more sleep spots for them. Because now we are 30, 30 people. And uh, I have lost a few of the elder and there will be more of the elder going. So I need more babies. You can see I have one child and I have one baby and that's it. And it's not very much at all, is it? So yeah we need more babies right also added more um pits as well because i did a lovely winter feast harvesting of both the mushrooms and also the hazelnuts so i paused my my hunters i paused my fishermen throughout the entire winter and look we still have plenty hazelnuts left so that is fantastic but yeah, as soon as uh, spring starts, I am adding, of course, the hunters and the fishermen back because there is no more hazelnuts and there are no more mushrooms coming in. So you have to do it. So trying to reach the Neolithic right now will take 
hours upon hours unless we start to get Neolithic culture. Oh, hello. That's a lot of goggies. How many are they? There are nine goggies. Nine wild dogs circling my camp. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I want to tame them. I want to feed them. Yeah, well, it is what it is. Cannot tame them yet, but soon. When looking at some of the people who have knowledge use, you can see that it is rather prevalent that the members that do have positive grades of the trait intellect and skill, they tend to, first of all, learn faster than those who do not. And also they all seem to tend to learn more types of knowledge use than those who do not. And you will also find that those who have very negative grades of, for instance, intellect and skill, they basically have one or two knowledges with very little uh, proficiency in it. This is not written in stone though. There is some kind of calculations where other things also play a part. I do not know what this entails. I just know how it turns out in the gameplay. And, and uh, the, the overall is that the, the more clever you are and the more uh, skill you have, the better you will learn knowledges, the more knowledges you will also learn. And this goes for all the tribes that I have played. So it's, it's a pretty good uh, marker for how you are going to do. If you're going to do tribe selection, you could look for those with these improved grades in, for instance, intellect and also skill if you want an extreme high efficiency. Um, uh, most people choose to just play it uh, random though, and it's uh, each, uh, each to their own device. Uh, whatever rocks your boat, go for it. Your boat, not mine. <laughs> We are getting closer and closer to the big reed and straw huts. I am just going to place down a few more of the bigger straw huts. I want to remove those small straw huts to the left of here, but they are so cute together like that. So I think I'm just going to leave them for a while. They won't harm at all, so there's that. And uh, see if I can do a little bit of fast forwarding so that we are not making an eight hour long video about uh, how the patch has affected the game. I could easily have a 12 hour video where I am showing absolutely everything and giving hints and tips of things I do and don't do, etc. etc. But um, no, that's not going to happen. I need to truncated a little bit together so it's not that long oh I love this torch it's um very lovely right I'm just going to place torches around because it's so cozy yeah you're not going to have a torch over there are you no <laughs> I'm not going to have it on the other side of the river no right let's uh, fast forward a little bit so this is the way the tribe is looking now, year six going into winter. We still only have 29 people. We've had an elderly die. We have a few more babies, which is good. I mean, we couldn't be completely dry on pregnancies for years on end, although that has happened in the past. Um, so look how cozy it is with all the um, torches lighting up the village. It's quite nice, isn't it? And they're very easy to maintain, just like taking a, a few sticks. Right, so now we have two babies. Excellent. She's 23 and she is 20. Oh, she's not feeling well. She has been sleeping in the stupid straw hut, the baby straw hut, the little straw hut. Oh, let me see, have I removed all of them here? Yeah, I have. They're all gone. So it's just these left and people shouldn't really go into those to sleep. Yeah, well, maybe have to build more, more reed huts to make sure that they go into the good ones. I think I'm going to do that. So I think I'm going to have to dismantle these because if people sleep in them for more than like four or five nights in a row, 
they don't feel well afterwards. I don't play them. Can you imagine all the ew, the spiders? Oh my goodness. I'm going to take this one down and this one and this one. So I'm going to focus on the reed instead. So I've taken away the uh, the icons by pressing K once because to me it is too much. My taste tells me this is better. So then uh, I just uh, check every now and then to see how my people are doing because I do want to see my people but at the moment uh, we have we have no such option when you press you lose everything and I have suggested to the devs that they differentiate so that one press you lose all the object icons and but you still have the human icons over their heads and then two press it takes away the human icons as well and then of course the third will take away the user interface as well and then the fourth of course will be that you bring everything back so at the moment this is what we have so i i press k once because i want none then i will cl quickly find out if anything is wrong uh, 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 famous last words here we go <laughs> Right, um, what are you guys, you're just, yeah, you are not really needed, see how many stones do these take, let's have a look, 20 and I have 48, so that's fine, then I can place these on, no, did I take it away, no, there it is, I can pause this on, well, it's not like they're joining it anyway, because it's, Lowest priority, it's the straggler group. What are you guys? You are, yeah, that's fine. Um, you are, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to force a few trees to be chopped. Don't need a million, but do need some. Are those horses? They are. Oh, they have little foals. Little babies. They're so beautiful. So beautiful. Going back to mommy. Their movement seems to have been improved since last and that's uh, good. That's really good. Yeah. Right, let's go back to what I was doing, which was to encircle trees to be chopped. Oh, it doesn't show, does it? Because I've taken away everything. Duh, I was wondering, why is it not showing? <laughs> so, one, two. Yeah, that'll do it for a bit. I'll take away the gathering, because that's not what we want. Okay. Oh, much better. I find it so messy to have everything showing. Right. Let me see... Yeah, we just have to wait until they come home with the required amount of reed. So I have 19 houses. That's quite all right. With uh, 30 people. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, she doesn't have a lot of, of skills, but I think she is one of the migrants we had earlier. So she has been working on her architecture, her pelt, her pelt tanning. You can see that they, when they are using the tanner, they are improving the leather working, and also when they are, um, you know, stocking it and stuff like that. And that is something that the entire tribe will do, bit here and bit there. They will share on this task, so there will always be some increase in pelt or in leather working, no matter. Um, this guy, I don't. I think he's fairly new as well. You can tell by his low proficiency. He's been doing some of the uh, architecture chores, whether it's repairs or or building. Yeah, as long as I don't lose people who has. 
uh, um, are holding the tribe overall max skill without anyone else having lured up to his skill, we are good. The worries will start when someone who holds the max tribe overall knowledge dies without anyone else having managed to reach his level of skill, then you can see you will have read in your monthly report of what you have lost. So allowing people to roam a bit free in the groups is always a good idea and also that they are automatically thank you system uh, swapping around on who does some of these mundane chores such as the the, the tanning and you know stoking the fire and restocking the the food dryers as well because that gives food processing and we do need that um, this guy has six yeah you can kind of see who is part of the original tribe and you can also see who are migrants because they don't have too much uh, proficiency in some of their knowledges or all of their knowledges because we haven't had any really knowledgeable uh, migrants have we we've had like it's three four times now we've had migrants and none of them have been impressive in the slightest the majority of them are actually had no skills so there's that but um, it is randomness of seed part of the game so as long as people don't die with all their skills without having taught them further on to others in the tribe uh, we are good absolutely good okay so we are going into winter we are in year seven I have removed all the small straw huts and the other straw huts as well it is really stressful to keep up with all the straw gathering for so many straw huts so I think I'm going to wait with more straw huts until we actually have the big ones because they grant sleep positivity I think that's a smart idea um, we have a few more extra pits as well because we are having the winter feast with the mushrooms and the hazelnuts again this year um, so that we can chill a bit on the fishing and also the hunting um, uh, my workforce is a little hampered because my my leader is so old that she has again all my policies has again been placed on to default so it is again only the adults that are working um, so I have 11 people in a tribe of 32 that is not working that is quite a bit but then again I do have a lot of elder I have 11 elder people but only three children so yeah um, we did have a few migrants but they didn't bring any extra chunks of knowledge above what we already had but at least they brought some knowledge didn't they so I, I would be happy even if they didn't have knowledge as well so so there's that yes yeah, so now we are in year eight and um, architecture and the other skills or the knowledges we have are fairly balanced the architecture of course is slow but um, it is belonging to what we are doing it belongs to the Mesolithic you you will not be able to build fantastic castles <laughs> in the Mesolithic at least not that we know of that's the point isn't it how much do we actually not know big question anyway let's uh, keep trucking on also something that the devs have done is that they have now made it so that the portraits are actually corresponding with the 3d avatars so if you check the portraits and you go to the avatar you can see that they are identical they have uh, done that on all the avatars so no matter who you have in your site they will correspond correctly with the picture in their portrait as well and they have also added a moustache can you see the moustache <laughs> that is actually quite cool that they've done that so yeah so that the elder gentleman doesn't necessarily need to have beards and stuff you know the big bushy beards they now also are very very handsomely having these moustaches as well and uh, yeah that is actually quite cool I've never seen that before so that's really really nice to see another new thing we have is the allium root 
I've said before, nobody likes the roots, but they can save your life. And uh, of course, we have got the roots in game, as they were most certainly a part of people's diet back in those days. We have had um, one migrant, and it was uh, a young teenager, so actually a child. Um, there are times where you have uh, children coming on their own. Uh, it happens normally when they are in their early teens, and they are still considered children in the game at least. Uh, we have had zero pregnancies in over two years. That is not good. So we now have almost as many elder as we have adults and only four children. So unless we get more babies, uh, this tribe is going to struggle. There's not so much you can do to manipulate the, the birth rate, except if you are constantly reloading and reloading and hoping for the best. I'm not going to do that. Uh, if it... Uh, is the end of the tribe and it, the, it is the end of the tribe because it's really you're not supposed to have to reload the game constantly in order to have survival you're supposed to play the random seed and that random seed could easily extinct your tribe like so many other tribes before so um, it is a part of the game not everyone will survive no matter how well you are playing it you are still in the grasp of randomness to a very certain degree. Um, pregnancies is definitely one of them. So, but uh, we are uh, doing okay with the knowledges. I do not have a single thing that I have lost anything on. Everything is slowly creeping upwards. Um, the slowest, however, is what I need to be the quickest, which is architecture. So it is hard work in Mesolithic to gain knowledge, and it's as it should be. The, the differences that I can see with this patch is that you tend to focus now more efficiently on maintaining skills because you certainly do not want any of them to to fall behind you don't want the red in your monthly report at all do you and uh, you do tend to overdo some of your building a little bit I don't think this will be an issue in the in the Neolithic though because Neolithic you start with a lot more people hence you will need a lot more things so you will have a natural build, a justified build of a lot more things and also the items uh, amount of what you are building compared to the Mesolithic where you for instance start with either 7 or like we did 14 which is the the old number. I do think that if you want an easy game Mesolithic is not the place to do that unless you're not interested in developing all your technologies until you get the best quality because you will not get the best quality in the either early or middle Mesolithic you need to go to the very late Mesolithic and then onwards throughout the entire Neolithic to get the really good uh, quality items the uh, Menhirs you can reach in the Mesolithic you just need architecture to do so uh, and that is not done in a swift. You need to work on that as well, pending your seed, of course. You could be really lucky and only have a short way to go. It is the same as it used to be. Some parts of Europe had technology before other parts of Europe. Some tribes were quite ahead of others, and some tribes were basically living under a rock, having more or less rudimentary knowledges. It, um, it varies greatly and the game reflects this by the randomness that they have created. So I think uh, now we just tipped over to year 9 so I'm going to play for one more in-game year and see if I can get more people in my... Oh! We did it! We got it! We got big red hearts, we got big straw hearts and we got small men ears! Oh! Okay, maybe I should play longer than 10 years because now I can build projects, I can build wonders, I can build a small lily henge. Oh my goodness, the video is going to be like 12 hours long. 
goodness sakes, maybe I should do it in two parts or eight parts. Or it's like three hours already. Seriously, there's so much in this patch to do. But this is great. I didn't think we were going to reach it because it was so slow. Year nine, it took us nine years to get to the big huts. Nine years is a long time. It's like a complete millennia. We have played for a thousand years. I guess that sounds about right with regards to developing uh, knowledges. But this is exciting. Let's move on. <laughs> Right, so what I have done already is that I've taken away, of course, all the straw huts because I didn't want any of those. It became so stressful to keep them up to date. And I'm going to take away uh, the reed huts as well because one reed hut is a 75 reed and one big straw reed hut is 150. So if I take away two, that is 150 reed immediately and the repair should be roughly the same. So I'm going to take away uh, these two for sure and uh, then see how much uh, reed I have. We've been here almost um, 10 years and we have uh, built the small reed huts basically since start more or less. It took perhaps a few years before we got them, but we have like, I don't know, 600 years of reed usage. It's, um, you can see close to the camp, there is not so much reed left because, I mean, almost a, a century of reed, uses, reed usage does something to the reed and you will need to replenish it. It, it is what it is. It's a part of the game. You migrate after the food you migrate after your resources and um, that's it so when these two are down i'm going to place or see if i can get enough reed and then i'm going to place a big reed out immediately um the only straw i will be build later though are the the big straw huts and um yeah because that is defensible isn't it um the two cultures can be a little bit confusing for some people having two cultures there in the requirement doesn't mean that you need both it means you need either so if you still have a lot of red in your neolithic but have green and blue or at last at least blue in your mesolithic you can still build the item even though you're lacking everything in neolithic this is a part of the system which makes sure that you can build the two culture appropriate things in both cultures and also to make sure that you cannot build a singular cultural appropriate item in the wrong culture. So if you have, for, for instance, the, the roundhouse, there is not even a discussion there. There will be no option for uh, um, Mesolithic. There will only be Neolithic. However, the men here, you can actually start building in the Mesolithic because it is, ta-da, a Mesolithic men here. So that's the reason you some, on some items can see both cultures. It means that you have the option to build them in both cultures. So that's um, good to know. Not everyone is, is aware of some of these smaller finicky things with the knowledge system. And, and as we tread along, I will probably remember to tell you more about them. It's just that this patch is so heavy, there is so much to, to explain, so much to talk about. I'm not even sure I have managed to remember it all. I've written down 20 things that I need to talk about that has followed this patch. And I have to admit, I've lost count. So I will just have to go through my notes as I'm making the video in hope that I'm covering everything. Um, I am, of course, open for all the questions and all the extra help yet that you want. Um, I play the game so much that I have a fairly good insight in the majority of the gameplay, uh, how the avatar should behave, you know, and, you know, avatar versus environment, your 
try policy versus your population, etc., etc. I know a, a lot about how the game is supposed to play, and I also know the envision of what the game is supposed to offer you as a player. So if if there are any areas that you will need uh, a little bit more help in with regards to explanations or basically just showing, just uh, just let me know and I will most certainly help you. Uh, don't forget it is a game in development so there will always be changes. So whatever I said two weeks ago might next week be outdated. So there is a, a certain need for me to update things as I go along and I can't always find the time to do it on the same day as it happens. For instance, this playthrough video has taken me three days to get the opportunity to start and the devs have already added uh, a few hot fixes since I started this because I do not have the time to do this on for so many hours in a row without also doing some work. So there's a, there's a little bit time col collision here of when I can do the fun part <laughs> when I need to do some actual work. Um, but if there is any areas that you, where you need a, a bit of explanation or a, a, a hand just yodel, sing me a song and I'll be all, all ready for you. <laughs> Anyway, let's see. We now have enough to build a reed heart, so I am going to chuck it down. Ta-da! Now let's see, that will take them roughly a day and a half to build. Oh, I started a bit late in the day, so they probably won't finish it today. But um, yeah, so it's uh, 150 reed and 10 rope. But yeah, we have all those things to just go, go, go. So then I need to wait until they gather enough for another one because I will then get another one. Because I've taken away, um, it's a 25 sleeping spots. So, so some people might uh, be having to sleep outside, which they will not be happy about, especially not after they have worked so hard for an entire millennia to get proper sleeping huts. So there's that. So um, I will also start building, of course, the big straw huts, because they also give sleep positivity. Any sleep positivity is better than none. So, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, so the hut is coming along. It shouldn't be long before it's done. And uh, I do believe that um, when you have so many of the huts that can take so much more people, you of course need less houses, less housing, and that might slow down your architecture a little bit, but I'm not sure how it actually plays out. We will have to just wait and see. If it's too slow, then I will just leave my pelt huts until it is no longer sustainable, or basically till I have to migrate, because uh, um, we have already been here almost a decade, and um, yeah, the resources are starting to, to dwindle. It is quite normal and expected. It would be really odd if you had the same amount of food constantly. It wouldn't be right. Ooh, look, achievements. That architect build all buildings. Yeah, finally getting there. So I'm lacking quite a few though. Um, I don't need more pits at all. And these are now only surplus areas it's kind of like uh, um, not sure what I can call them but this is the only place um, where they will be allowed to put food if there is no space in the storage facility so it's kind of like a, a filling area uh, how many paltots do I have now I have I have 14 really yeah I have 14 paltots and one Reed hut, which is not enough. You can see people are sleeping on the ground around the fireplace. Yeah, we need to sort that as quickly as possible. 36, and I need another 114. And I'm also doing, yeah, we don't need more of the trees, but I do want you to continue to crop a bit on those. You can see that those um, uh, reeds that are not harvested, they are turning brown because. They don't live so well through the winter, so these are fully grown, so we can easily ask them to tr crop these without killing any sprouts or 
any young plants. This is one of the things that uh, a lot of players um, struggle a little bit with uh, to distinguish between those who are young and those who are mature. Um, the safe bet is to watch their color and most certainly the height of them. Uh, remembering that if you are using the clear task tool to to help the tribe out you need to be extremely careful so you don't kill off your sprouts or your young plants because that is an insane loss of resources. If you do keep using the clear task tool to get more either plant fiber or whatever it is breed you, you can actually cut them off so early that you basically get nothing and it is yeah it's not good you need to be a little bit patient the best thing to do is to just let the system do it for you because the system will never allow any gatherer to cut any plants that are not mature so good idea to let system do it unless you know exactly what you're doing and to be quite fair there are a lot of players that still do not know quite exactly what they're doing when they are using the clear task tool they tend to ravage things in order to get some other things and they are kind of shooting themselves a little bit in the foot so, but you know, we all have a learning curve. You have to learn, and and sometimes we learn best from really bad mistakes. So it is what it is, and and we're all different. It's all good. All is good. Okay, so while well, they are gathering enough uh, reed for the second big reed hut, I am actually going to make a big straw hut. I will take it a little bit away from the camp. But I wanted them to go to that one before they go to any of the pelt hearts because the big straw heart actually has sleep positivity. So I, I might not really win here, but uh, I shall certainly try. Might have to rearrange some of the pelt hearts, but I don't really expect to stay here for another 10 years. Um, but uh, migration is certainly not around the corner just yet because I haven't been super wasteful I have been a little bit wasteful I have to admit like uh, mass harvesting the hazelnuts for winter but that was actually quite fun I think I'm going to continue to do that because that was really fun not the waste part the waste part is never fun the, the waste part can be really frustrating when you need to stay another four years to finish a project then that's frustrating but um, yeah I haven't played stupid, I haven't played idiotic or moronic or, or not paid attention to what's going on. Um, but there has been a lot to keep an eye on because there are so many changes. And you need to update yourself as well with, with your methodology and how you're playing the game in order to, to get best um, result from, you know, your agenda. What is your agenda? So there's that. Mine is just basically normal by need play with a little bit of pushing help here and there, but spamming a few things. But uh, mostly normal by need. So, okay, this should go quickly because, uh, yeah, we have all the straw in. I have quite a few elder people. You can see I have 13 elder people and they will slowly but surely die and I have only had one baby in quite a few years it is too little and I only have 14 adults left so I'm crossing fingers that we will get a migrants please give migrants we need migrants we need I'm not sure we actually need females because we do have a nice uh, balance of males versus female. Oh, oh my goodness. Are you serious? Just as I said it, I need to... Oh, we got three, but one of them is old. Look at her fishing skills. Dude, I'll take that any day. Okay, she has uh, rudimentary fishing and hunting. And he has architecture and he's smart. I'll take this uh, group. I would take them anyway. Can have all the shittiest traits in the world and zero, zero knowledge. I will still take them. You're all welcome. This way. Come, come. Okay, so. <laughs> uh, I also noticed that uh, developers have changed when the migrants are coming. They don't 
only come during dawn anymore. They can come at daytime, at night time, midday, late day. So the, the timing is also now 100% random, which is totally fine. Totally fine and completely natural. So, uh, oh, I don't have storage areas for all my tools. Yes. Big straw hut is completed and it should have roughly 25% sleep positivity. Yes, it does. And you can see since we got enough knowledge to build it, we have also increased our architecture a little bit, which I, I, I quite like. I quite like that. Even though the tribe is small for the year we are in, we are still rather efficient. I have to say, we are doing okay. We've had a few small issues because I haven't really paid attention to workforce versus income versus the, the buildings I have chalked down. For instance, I learned this when I chalked down a ton of, of fences and suddenly there were no more resources coming in because everyone was running to the, the buildings I demanded them to build. So yeah, I learned a bit from that. Uh, need to be extra careful and and you know methodology wise what you have what I have had to change is you know the expectancy of things being done in a certain way with regards to your workforce always doing your bidding the reason you need to change that or that I have had to change that is because you can actually build your tribe to death so easily you can repair your tribe to death so easily if you have too many things to repair versus your actual population if you constantly have at least half your workforce doing repairs or constantly doing building you will suffer areas will suffer whether it's food whether it's resources other you know non-edible resources everything will pay for it so I've had to change a little bit of the amounts I put down and when I put them down and you have to calculate so that not everything is built in one go so not everything is demanding repairs in one go it needs to be evened out so that there is not uh, any moment where your entire flipping f workforce is busy repairing so this is something that is also going to vary between the tribes because you need to also look at who do you have regarding traits and, and grades of traits in your tribe? If you have like half the tribe have a fitness reducing grade, they will not manage the work. They will complain, they will become unhappy, in the end they will stop working. So there's a lot of things to consider per tribe and, and since no tribe is completely the same, you need to have a little bit different strategies here and there pending your situation. But this is something that you will learn as you go along. You, you don't need to have uh, knowledge about absolutely everything because tribes are not always the same. There are certain areas where they will differ and uh, you will learn this yourself. You've probably played a million tribes as well where you have seen, oh, this worked in this tribe, but not in my next. You know, these are the things that you will learn from. And I find it really, really helpful. So you, you learn several strategies to deal with different things depending on your tribe and, of course, your environment. Your environment could be, and very often is, your absolute worst enemy. The seed is a blessing, but also can be quite a curse as we have proof of daily when playing this game <laughs> it's not always good things with seeds so yeah um so now i have a big reed hut and i have a big straw hut so i'm going to let people um have a day of rest from all the building and then i'm going to build another reed hut because i've taken away uh, 25 sleep, sleep spots and I have only added is it what 7 plus 6 13 so I need another caught me in maths <laughs> I need another 12 I think God, I have no clue I am useless when it comes to mathematics someone tell me how many sleep spots I need help help <laughs> oh it's hilarious <laughs> oh so yeah, 
Okay, so the fish is going down a little bit. I need to see. Did I lower it horrendously? I have 34 people. So I need at least three. Okay, so so it's summer. Summer is coming in, so then I don't need to up my fishermen. But I need to remember to, to keep an eye on this because poof, all the food is gone and I'm busy doing everything else. Let's see. Uh, what are you guys doing? Okay, you're doing honey and no no more need for stones actually I am going to place a man here here so we can see it being built Ta -da! here you go tribe responsibility they will uh, quickly bring all the stones to it until there are no more stones left and then the group will slowly but surely bring home stones but it's, n it's never going to be 5 million people working on the men here. It's going to be like to uh, swap around and doing it and stuff like that. It's not a million of them. So it's not half my workforce, which is excellent. So that's a good thing. Year 10 and we have stayed same locality for almost 1500 years. We have had no player course deaths, only all age. Nor have we had any leavers, but we have of course had complaints. It is very hard to avoid those with such a diverse tribe population. We started with random proficiency and has worked our way almost to the top. And we have been offered yet another way to play this game. And it is fantastic. The more options we have on how to play it, the better it becomes. For me, the patch is so rich in what it offers us and the new take on doing your tasks and chores make it so interesting and so much more rewarding when you reach a milestone in your quest for more knowledge. There are quite a few challenges though when you are playing the Mesolithic culture, but there is nothing that you cannot overcome with hard work and some smart play. We as players must by this also be adaptable and adjust a game as we go along. The knowledge system with its tweaks is for me working really well and it does add excitement to the game much more now than ever before. You are basically glued to the screen for hours on end until you are reaching the goals that you have been working so hard to reach. The Mesolithic is not for the impatient ones, let's just establish that once and for all. So if you want everything in one go, Mesolithic is not the timeline or the culture for you. Uh, some items will for instance also be unavailable for you no matter until you reach the correct cultural requirements. And also your population numbers will be much lower than you will have in the Neolithic era. Um, I do love the dogs, I love the human characteristics being so precise, I love the way they look and I did so enjoy that I could finally reap the rewards after over a millennia of work without being build, able to build any quality items for my people and then poof suddenly I could build several quality items for my people, that was fantastic, fantastic to achieve. Thank you so much for taking part in this journey, it has been a blast and really long <laughs> i also have to make the neolithic playthrough i will do that in a short while uh, it's likely going to be a lot shorter than this one but i hope just as fun until then have fun and do take care no, 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 no.